Okay, in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome our guests here this evening and those watching on cable. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might just at the uh, beginning, uh, I know I for one and my colleagues also are uh, extremely pleased to see you back in the, in the big chair here. <laughs> and, uh, you're obviously enjoying a speedy recovery from your surgery and uh, we're certainly happy to have you back. Oh, well, thank you, In Steve. one piece, well, maybe thank a piece you. missing there. <laughs> yeah, one piece anyway. A little piece missing, yes. A little piece missing, but, uh, but yes, congratulations but, uh, on the success. I'm feeling surgery. good, and uh, I really appreciate the efforts that, and the thanks that everybody's given me. Uh, so the first item on our agenda this evening is uh, to sign the May uh, town election warrant. And, uh, do we have that somewhere? It should be a motion. A we need a motion. In the big red. Big red, okay. Big red, it's in the red fold. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to sign the May 2nd, 2017 town election warrant. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Is John here? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's why I didn't see him. He's hiding in the back. <laughs> Next item on our agenda is uh, we have a uh, public notice on the Thompson Club request. And I'll read the public notice first. The Board of Selectmen will hold a hearing on the application of Thompson Club, Inc., DBA, TCC Grill, to Mid Iron Drive and Pro Shop to a Mid Iron Drive to extend their seasonal license from October 31st, 2017 to November. 30th, 2017, on April 24, 2017, at 8.05 p.m., all interested parties are invited to attend. So we have representatives from Thompson Club. We do. We do. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is uh, Tim Putin. I am an attorney. I'm also the secretary for Thompson Country Club. Um, what I have, first I just presented. Could you, could you hold one second? What happened to our secretary? Just making a copy. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure that she's uh, recording that. Uh, Maybe this will be a good time for me to go in. Technical problem. No problem.
All set. Continue, please. I didn't know if you what did you want to wait for Mr. Prisso or does it matter for I'm sorry? Did Mr. you want to wait for Mr. Prisso to return? Yes. I didn't see him sneak out, but okay, thank you. We started at six thirty, so <laughs> you have a long night ahead of you, fortunately. Yeah, it could be a long night. <laughs> I know this says it says October. I just want to ask this, but on the bottom it has different hours from April first to November thirtieth. Is that a yeah? Is that you yeah. mentioned October? It's currently October. They're, right. looking, they're looking to extend it to November now. So lengthen the season. It just starts April first. Correct. If I, I, I see what you mean. Okay. My golf club is not open in the middle of the winter. Uh, if I may first, I, uh, as part of the, the request of the board, I have uh, certified uh, return receipts for uh, butters. Um, the, um, the board had requested that I uh, certify, notify by certified mail of butters who were not members of the Green and by regular, member, uh, mm -hmm. by regular mail people who were members of the Green. Um, just as a little background, the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission uh, provides that seasonal licenses have only two conditions. Um, one is that they start no sooner than April 1st, and two is that they be closed for six weeks during the entire year. That, what six weeks? They don't specify. So anything beyond that is the, the realm of the local board. So what we have here today is you have your normal season, uh, seasonal license goes from April 1st to October 30th. Uh, what we have found in the past is that November tends to be a, not a bad golf month, or it could be three feet of snow and there is no golf. Uh, so what we're looking to is see if we could extend our license till November to use it, if necessary. Now obviously, um, as you can well see, the uh, a license, the seasonal license this year came into effect on April 1st. Uh, unfortunately, it was snowing, uh, so there was no golf, there was no use of that license. Much in November, um, if it's snowing, there won't be much, any use of that license. So we're looking for an extension to November. Uh, I'm going to address just a couple of issues is that as you probably may guess that the use of the license is really kind of tempered on golf and it's also tempered on the daylight. Um, so what you have in November is probably the least amount of use that you're going to have all year because it's dark early. Nobody's, nobody's golfing after 5 o'clock so we're just looking for something this would mostly be like a 12 to 5 type of situation where it actually would be in use. We'd still keep the same hours but I think that this is just to see if we ever have one of those rare uh, occurrences in New England where we have a nice Indian summer and there's nice days that we have the ability. Obviously we don't want to stay open uh, because you have to staff it and you have to pay staff and they have to stay on. Uh, you don't want to open it too long because you're just you're paying people for probably when people aren't golfing. So that, that's what I'm, I'm asking today. Board members have any questions? Anyone from the audience have any questions? Mr. Yeah, yeah, just my only comment was, uh, it, as you're well aware, I, I originally opposed the uh, granting of this license, uh, but that's history, so the board is granted and that's fine. And now we're looking just to extend it even more. Uh, I guess to me that's uh, Again, of concern, say my concerns are the same as far as the uh, uh, Thompson Club sold their license and sold their building to Mr. Yeba. He made huge investments. I think this does impact him. I think it's unfair. Um, however, the license has been issued. I will be supporting it. I still don't like the idea, but I will be. Right, so. The majority of the water spoken on the license has been issued. So. I, I when I, every time I go to Mr. Uh, Yebba's facility and I see the parking lot full, I, I, I find it a little hard to believe that it's having any major impact on his license. No, as far as it, during the golf season, season. During the golf season, it, it yeah. most assuredly would be. I don't know, I had to wait three weeks to get a <laughs> reservation in the time frame that I wanted. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, any other board members have any comments, questions regarding this request? Hopefully we won't be back here again next year. Changing. No, no, this is, we're not looking to extend. I, I, think. I, I think what I've explained to the board, that, you know, this is new to us. 
we kind of envisioned, um, as I said last time, I don't want to repeat myself, we kind of envisioned this as being more of a, you know, let's try to get families here at night. And we, we've discovered over the past year that's just not working. This is, this is strictly a grill room for people who play golf, they finish golf, they come in, have a sandwich, have a drink, and leave. That's the way it's, it's, it's turned out to be. I mean, we, we would like it to be something more of a money maker, but it, this is something we actually probably end up losing money on. Mr. Yeah, Hill. I just want to work off of something that Mike just said. It made me, made me think. He said, you don't want us to come back to this next year. I mean, then asking for an, uh, an ex another extension next year or? Change of manager. What? Change of manager. manager. Okay. Well, right. well we, are, we are coming, just so you know, you are, we are coming for with a change of manager forward. As I explained to the board last time, um, we had put on that uh, our uh, president as the manager on a temporary basis. We are interviewing. We actually had a candidate. We presented. Uh, uh, we went so far as to fill out the application, and that candidate didn't work out. So we are actively interviewing someone new for a, a change of manager. So, uh, would, will we come for an extension of license? No. This is obviously uh, we'll barely get November in. If we, there would no way we want uh, December. As far, uh, but as far as a new manager, yes, you will be getting a. Uh, an application in shortly for a new manager. Excuse me, Bob. But I would assume now, oh, I anticipate you actually next year asking for the same extension. A renewal of the license. I, re I, would, I would ask for a renewal, renewal of the same of the period, time, time period, yes, if it was granted. Just, you wouldn't have, he wouldn't have to if we granted it. Right. Uh, if we grant it this time, then right. next year we renew. the renewal will be for the same time, the same April 1st okay. to November 30th. Okay. I thought so our standard would, norm was would have to 31st. For renewal. Apply for renewal. Mr. It is concerning that you have to continue to have no s stability with the manager there. And I think you guys need to get that locked down. Oh, I agree. Because it's going to come to a point where I'm going to start the vote no only because you can't just continue to have turnover. That means you have an issue. And you guys got to get that figured out. Yeah. You really do. To be honest with you, the main issue is that you're only employing someone eight months of the year. You got to figure it out. Yeah, if you want to do this type of business, you got to get some consistency. Exactly. You're dealing with liquor. You're dealing in a social environment. You got to get along. I appreciate that. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments from the board? At which point uh, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to extend the seasonal club licenses for Thompson Club Inc. DBA TCC Grill Two Mid Iron Drive and Pro Shop Two A Mid Iron Drive from October 31st, 2017, to November 30th, 2017. Second. Second Mr. Yu. On the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Thank you. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your point. I will keep that in mind. Okay. Is there anyone here in the audience here for public comment? Yeah, I think that would be best. Uh, good evening, uh, Rich Walner, 57 Lakeside Boulevard. I've prepared my statement just to be efficient and try to hit all the right issues. Um, you may know me, um, you, you should know that I serve as Vice Chair of the COA, Council of the Aging. Um, I'm prior chair and current member of the EDC, and I'm chair of the Social Services Action Team, which is a subset of the Community Impact Team. Uh, through the SSAT, I am also founder of the adult enrichment group called ACT. That stands for Advocates for Adults, Community, and Teen. And our singular focus is on the quality of life for all residents, but especially for the adults of North Reading. We've been around for about four years now and are comprised of town residents, um, professionals in the area, uh, town employees who want to work in cooperation with us, and some of our senior consultants like uh, Gloria Mastro or people like that. Um, you may also remember me as the person who ran for selectman last year Fortunately, I failed, which my <laughs> wife is eternally grateful, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, based on my experience in these various roles, I have come to define two types of people in North Reading, those with kids and those without. Those with kids enjoy tremendous support from the community. We have top-notch educators, great facilities, and offer lots of diverse programs to support our kids in and out of class. I have enjoyed this as my son is a junior, and we have seen firsthand what this experience has been all about. But oftentimes we can overlook the needs of our next set of people in North Reading, those without kids. Those without kids is predominantly defined as adults over the age of 60, which defines 24% of our town population. 
and projections are expected to be about 40% within a decade. And if you ask them how they feel, and I do, you will discover that they do not think North Reading is a very senior friendly town, especially those who have been here for a long time and lack significant resources. As a result, they are often forced to leave town because there is no affordable housing, or they cannot pay their ever-increasing property taxes, or they lose their cars and they can't get around town because without a car, you're hosed in town. As a result, they are often for, oh, excuse me. So why should we care about the people without kids anyways? We are really a, a school town after all. Well, let's do the economic, and economic analysis first. It costs the town $20,000 per year for my son to go to school. If I were to pay his way through my property taxes, I would have to pay $30,000 annually. Confession, I don't pay $30,000 annually in taxes. With an annual property tax average of eight to $9,000 per household, I depend on my neighbors without kids to pick up the difference. As a result, I thank my neighbors, and these are real neighbors, Ben and Carrie, and my other neighbors, Bridget and Brian, for supporting my son as they don't have kids, but they do pay their taxes. But if we choose instead to turn our backs on the people with no kids, we will suddenly be overwhelmed and we will go broke as a result because we can't afford those kind of rates. And that is the point. We are a community that depends on each other. Encouraging people to live lifelong in North Reading, regardless of age, is in everyone's interest from an economic point of view. And as a result, we get the extra benefit of having a community where everybody knows your name, which is how a community be becomes and stays happy and connected. So why, bring the, why am I bringing this all up now? Am I running for selectman again on some secret ballot? No way, says my campaign manager, that's not gonna happen. It said, it has come to my attention that people are already starting to earmark the $18 million that we expect to come from the Pulte property sale, plus the additional $3 million of expected annual property taxes once that built out. For example, the candidates for selectmen are already talking about it. The EDC is talking about it. A resident at town meeting mentioned it was a way to solve our bathroom problems. And most recently, I've heard that the selectmen are considering a town warrant to study the feasibility of raising this building and creating a combined town hall and fire station in the same building. When I shared this information with my ACT group, I heard great concerns. Why is this coming up so soon? We don't have the money yet. Um, how does this fit in with the other town objectives? And do all the residents know and share the same town objectives that we're starting to see uh, come to light? Needless to say, this is a topic of discussion. So instead of saying, staying silent, we all agreed last week that I should raise our concerns as soon as possible so we can work cooperatively with all of you as we explore these opportunities. Um, some of the people in my group are Rita, Diane Norris has come out, and Dave Doucette. I think you all know them in one capacity or another. <coughs> so let's look at the list of town needs as best I understand them. And again, I'm not privy to everything you know, but based on you know, the talking I've done. Schools. I would say it's pretty safe to say that they are in really good shape. And as far as Phil is concerned, we really don't have to think about that at this point in time. Anybody disagree, let me know, but so, so far nobody has. Um, how about our water supply? Mike, the town employees, um, and all of you have done a good job in researching this issue, and all the, predict all the costs are predicted to hit the water bill, not the tax bill. Um, so that one looks like it's pretty well under control, and it's vital for our future. And the MW MWRA connection at Concord Street, predictably that expense will hit the business property owners who will benefit from the betterment that the hookup will offer. So what is left that will affect our property taxes? Well, fire department, we know there's a need. Town hall, I think there's a need. <laughs> no one would argue with that. Um, three more, affordable housing, shows up even in your strategic objectives. It's something we're thinking about, right? Would affect seniors, millennials, vets, disabled. Um, kind of more of a wish list, the intergenerational community center. That would affect um, youth services, uh, the senior center, um, vet services, and I'm missing one thing, but I'll think of it, and youth services, um, all working together. And then this new Main Street. So the question here is, what is the priority of each item listed above, and what the heck is this new Main Street, Main Street thing that I'm speaking of? Does it even deserve to be on the list? So let's just dig in a little deeper there, and um, can you just hand these out? Um, Diane's gonna hand you out, like the study that the MAPC did did studying uh, about um, Main Street. And it's, it's, it's pretty clear what the title is. It was an exhaustive st study, I would say, very thorough. 
Um, this study was a result of a meeting I had with Mike G and I. We're at uh, Heavenly Donuts along with other people. This was the summer of 2015. And we were sitting there meeting with the chamber and a variety of other people who cared about this. Thank you, Diane. And um, what we were trying to do was try to say, how can we increase more economic development in town? And if you sit in Heavenly Donuts and look outside, you know, a lot of traffic, but nobody's walking around. Not much is happening. So I finally looked at Mike and said, you know, because I see Andover and I see Reading, and I asked Mike, I said, Mike, if we change the highway and reduce, if we somehow reduce this to make it more palatable, to make it more like a Main Street, is that something the state would go for? And Mike said, yes, it is. And as soon as we heard that, for me, it was like, it's a whole new world. Let's think about our Main Street. So, you know, this is appropriately tired. Town of North Reading, Main Street, Route 28 at 62. Short-term 2016 to 2021 economic development strategy. And I'll just point out a few highlights. On page three, you can kind of flip through this. On page three, and by the way, this is on our website, town government website. On the advisory committee, we have a you know wide uh, swath of people from CPC, EDC, ZBA, the chamber, selectmen, myself, um, the COA, the CDC, there's a wide variety of people that were involved with this, as were a lot of town residents. At every meeting we had, we had 60, 70 people show up. Uh, another thing I will point out is that on page six, at the very bottom, uh, we had two advisory committee meetings. We had a community workshop, and then we had a final presentation brought back to the community so we could get final comments. And what you have is the final draft of everything that happened. And overwhelmingly, if you go to page nine, all of the interest ended up being around 62 and 28, Winter Street and 28, the old stop and shop, anywhere in that area. That was considered to be, if we were gonna do a new downtown, that was the area that it was of greatest interest. And then if you go to page 12, I learned this that day that we met at Heavenly Donuts um, the biggest problem we have is we have a highway going through our town. And people in Andover really don't care about our town. They're going through at 50, 60 miles an hour in the morning, and they're going very fast. But if we adopt a concept of traffic calming, taking the 12 feet wide lanes and bring them down to a more palatable level of 11 or 10 feet, you're gonna slow the traffic down and actually benefit the community if you wanna do some economic development. I didn't know it was called traffic calming until literally that day I was going to Boston put on NPR, and they started talking about in New Orleans how traffic calming has been very effective. So that's what that's about. Um, if you go to the next page, on page 13, um, the, one of the big things they call for is if you're gonna create a Main Street, you have to have a recognizable gathering space or landmark. That's what that talks about. You can't just have something in the middle of nowhere, you need to put it somewhere where people can gather. And then the most exciting one is on page 19. If you start thinking about creating more things that build up synergy, you can see on page 19 they're talking about what the town needs, which is about 37 to 75 townhouses and about 130 to 172 condos and apartments. Uh, affordable would be the right uh, thing here. And then they, they are saying in this study that if you put all these elements together, traffic calming, put a there there, put an activity there, bring in your residential housing, you'll be able to add into the town 10 stores that we don't currently have and be able to add into town six restaurants that we don't currently have. I like to think of this as, this is like the Linfield Marketplace. Linfield Market, this is like a mini Linfield Marketplace. They built the retail, they built the restaurants. The affordable housing is for half market, affordable housing is for residents of Linfield or people who have relatives who live in Linfield and they have that all worked out so that people there, and the um, marketplace actually has an outdoor function where they do skating in the winter and they do outdoor performances that way. So um, you get the idea, community feedback was very strong. Um, one of the big things we know about was it was a zoning problem. We've already started to address that, which is good. Um, this sewer package treatment plant, because we're, we're not gonna have sewage going down Main Street anytime too soon that I can see but we're in a great spot to do that, so that's a lot covered. Um, and then the community, so now I'm just gonna skip ahead, you don't have this, but I do. You know, the, the community was asked within these people that came, you know, how do they feel about this? They were guiding this pr 
principle, right? And um, when they asked which blocks do you want to see development happen sooner, it was basically all around the stop and shop in 62 areas. When they were asked about would you welcome, you know, condensed multifamily housing, um, like 80% were saying yes, we would support that. Um, if you talked about um, making the main street a walkable, livable area, again, about 80% of the people went for that. Um, so it, it's been based on my experience, you know, talking to people that a lot of people aren't aware of the study. Aren't, a lot of people aren't um, aware of the implications of the study. And so I'm trying to bring it to your attention that this is something we should be thinking about because now we're raising the question of, of uh, the fire station and the, um, and the town hall and what to do with that. So let me just get back on track here. Um, so um, my call for action, this is what I'm bringing to your attention, is I suggest that we take the time to understand each of the five projects listed above, which is, and, and if you can hand out the summer sheets, that'd be great. So if you too, read if you could, or David, if you have it. Um, you know, we have the firehouse, we have the um, town hall, we have affordable housing, we have intergenerational community center, we have the new main street. Um, let's, let's at one point, let's bring this all out on the table. Let's everybody have a chance to um, express what's going on with each of these projects and how they might work together. And I'll give you one example. If we decide to raise this building and then decide to put the firehouse here and town hall here, we don't get the benefit of potentially moving this into the area that we're talking about. And that would create synergy within our town. That would be a missed opportunity. So while we have the land here and it's easy to imagine just doing that, it may not be the best place to put, put it because it doesn't give you a there there. Um, we know that we purposely, uh, on the, we could have gone for a less, um, um, we could have gone for affordable housing on uh, Lowell Street. We decided collectively to actually let that be high end price condos with the intention of maybe redirecting that, some of that money more towards affordable housing in Main Street. So um, anyways, I'll just do my calls of actions and I'm done and I thank you for your time. Uh, let's bring the stakeholders together to present and discuss these five pro proposals in an open, fair, and transparent forum. Let's really dig into the MPC study for the new Main Street and consider how the other objectives can be integrated at the same time, creating synergy and opportunity for all. Let's encourage our town departments and leaders, Board of Selectmen, CBC, EDC, CIT, Finance, Capital Improvements, to help identify priorities and then let's survey the residents of North Reading to get their input before we go to town meeting not during town meeting. If we need to bring in a consultant to help us do that, let's do that. Fourth, let's update the town master plan and take the time to interpret the results. It hasn't been done since 2004, and I know that's on the docket, so I'm aware of that. And fifth, let's ensure the feasibility study you're planning for the town hall fire station integrates with all the five objectives and we get the most bang for our buck for doing the work. That's it, sorry if I took up too much. Thank you. Just wanted to get it out there. Mr. Mr. Chairman, okay. Okay. just make a comment. Um, first of all, thank you for pulling all of this together. No problem. And thank you for uh, speaking about part of the community that um, uh, needs to be heard and needs support. And, and, and you're doing that with ACT and the other programs that you're doing. So I appreciate that. And, and this is a, a wonderful starting point uh, for the town to start looking more broadly at the population rather than restrictively. That's its intent. Thank you. Good, good. Uh, Rich, I, I just think, uh, again, thank, thank you very you much, much for, for your efforts, and, and not just tonight, but previous efforts and your continuing efforts along yeah. with uh, your colleagues over here. But the, um, I just want to assure you that I think that uh, most everybody's on the same page. You know, while you see some proposals coming forward, one we, we'll talk about a little bit tonight, it doesn't mean that everybody here is like-minded in relation to, you know, let's take a look at the town hall and fire station today. Separately, outside of something like this, there are some of us who think that it should be looked at more collectively. It comes to siting this particular location. You look at what we just did for rezoning there, we've got nine to 11 acres here uh, that directly abut uh, the value of this uh, economically is far more if we're not here. Uh, and again, 
if we're going to follow through on what we're looking to achieve here as far as Main Street, yes, uh, creating a center of town, generally speaking, you'd like to have a town hall there. Um, so I, I think there are a lot of like-minded individuals uh, sitting on this board and uh, That's right. on other boards. Um, so yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think you need to be as alarmed as maybe you are, well, uh, which you, is okay, you know, and, I, and I'm glad you are. You know what, I, I, um, you know, I was encouraged to bring this conversation up sooner than later, and I knew at some point we'd have this conversation. Um, but I do hear things that are not the same, and I do hear people that, and when I say New Main Street, they look at me like, what are you talking about? You're crazy, man. You yeah, that, that's true. I, and, I, and, and so, you know, that's come up enough where, you know, and again, at the end of the day, maybe the fire station and the town hall being here is the best idea, and I will support that, you know. But it's like, let's just have an objective, open discussion about it. Let's put things on the table. Let's see what we can make happen. You know? I believe it's good. I believe those types of discussions will take place. I think there'll be forums that will uh, look at things uh, collectively, uh, and I believe that we're going to. Well, there may be difference, differences of opinion as to yeah. what we should be doing. I think we'll come to a consensus in relation to what's best for the community and what do we really want our community to look like a generation from now. And uh, I, and I think we're heading in the right direction. We have a lot of good things happening. Good. Uh, and, uh, and I appreciate your effort. I appreciate your speaking out. I appreciate you bringing it for the, to the forefront. And uh, I look forward to working with you. Go team. Any other board members have a comment? Yes. I would just say the <coughs> same. And, and I would also, I, I would say the same. Thank you for putting it all together and making all these points. And I'm the newest member here, but I also know that this, my, colleagues have been working on strategic planning for several years now and a lot of these things aren't done in the you know side room or back room they're done at these public meetings and the plans online like you said so that's a lot of these things are things that there's a strong desire to do and, and definitely we've all heard the same issues especially keeping our seniors in place here, being able to stay here, yeah. being able to move into something more affordable when they downsize in the community that they love, and that's kind of a repetitive thing that we we are, if I can speak for everyone, we all hear that, yeah. and that is a concern for all of us, and addressing that need is something that we're all mindful of, and I also agree with you, we don't even have the money yet, so it, it shouldn't <laughs> be earmarked for this, that, or the other thing, and yeah. You know, we really should act cautiously about it because it's it's um, it's a wonderful thing. It's a gift. It's a, it's a real gift. It yeah. is a gift. Yeah. yeah, and it's the good work of the, um, you know a lot of people in this in this community that that's happened, but we don't have it yet. So yeah. yeah, let's not spend it before we. Yeah, have I agree. It. Yeah, I agreed. We should really you know plan this. Plan this. Yeah, the planning is really the biggest thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but it's I really think this board has point. also had a lot of these things in mind for a long time now, for years now, want, you know, recognizing some of these things and maybe this will give us the opportunity to actually move forward yeah. um, in doing those things, which is great. So yeah, because it's nice to wish, but if it isn't, you know, yes. if you can't really do it, you know, it's just a wish, right? So, right. yeah. And, 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 and my group, and my and group what is... What you talked about tonight, you're absolutely right from the point of view of, you know, this town's been a bedroom community for a long, long time, the, uh, we struggled through budget after budget, getting enough money into the school system. And here we are to get a great opportunity from the state, our economic development committee, which you were part of, uh, come up with a great idea. And we end up, although we didn't get commercial development at the Berry property, we got something just as good because it's going to have a negative or uh, very little impact, if any, on the school system. And we increase our, our tax revenue and we have some capital money to start to work on some of these other projects. And some of them, are, you know, are, uh, you know, clearly, uh, you know, in our vision, you know, we're working on trying to get a sewer line extended down Concord Street, yep. which would have a significant impact on opportunities there. Nothing would happen overnight, but the fact that it would be there would mean uh, potentially a hotel and then God knows what happens after that. Yeah. The idea of uh, making the center uh, or a, a second center of North Reading on Main on Route 28, like we have in Reading, and when you go to Andover, right, the traffic slows down considerably. Yep. Right, and uh, it's okay to have a little speed between the 
cities, but when you get there, it ought to slow down. I think all of these things are, are good for the community. And I think you're right, is that we have to look at the whole picture and then determine what's the best and most logical way of getting all these things done. Because they all can't be done at once. I agree, totally. And we could yeah. screw it up by doing, heading off in the wrong direction. Yeah, I just don't want to ignore, you know, like the But I mean, the to think things. that the board has already made up their mind. We haven't even discussed it in terms of, you know, what's next. And right now, as we head into town meeting, we're going to get through that. And, uh, you know, after town meeting, uh, uh, you know, perhaps uh, it's time to then start to think through what the next steps are going to be. Yep. One thing at a time. And uh, that, That's fine. Yeah, again, I, I felt like I, I might be jumping a little bit earlier, but it's better no, earlier it's than fine. late. That's okay. And we didn't, we didn't want to, like, surprise you, you know, two months from now with whatever. But you know. to your point is, is that, you know, we, we tend to – Spend it, you know, in a lot of time. A lot of people have put an awful lot of time and effort in, and will continue to do so. And for once in a while, we get caught up talking to the same, talking to ourselves, and not necessarily informing the public well enough, so that when you say the main streets concept, people are going, "What are you talking about?" Right. Um, so again, we need to be reminded sometimes to push it out there, um, look for the feedback, and. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate you stepping forward. Mr. Masseri, just, Bob, Bob, Bob. just oh, sorry. I've been trying to wave to you. Um, <clears throat> just a couple things. First, this MAPC study, I, you know, it's been done now for quite a while. And the participation by the community I thought was fantastic in this. It's unbelievable. And, you know, and I, I don't think it should just be put on a shelf and get dusty. I, I don't disagree with you. There's some things with it that's concerning to really execute it. To do eminent domain is something that... You know, this board have, would have to have a serious discussion on. Um, and the reason that you see this Warren article that we haven't even really discussed yet either, it, it's just because we got to get things going. You, and to do any kind of study and to really make some real concrete progress, you need to bring the experts in to help us figure out when the word feasibility, you know, how we actually do this. But we got to start somewhere. And I don't think it was ever intended to railroad this idea or any other idea. The intent was, okay, let's get started. And we don't need the JT Berry money, by the way, to do a feasibility study, okay? We can do this without it. Yeah. And, and the other thing, the last thing I'll leave you with in the Council on the Aging, and, as I, and I've said this many times, there is nothing that stops you from getting an RFP on the street today with this wonderful town on land that we have all over the place to at least get something out there to try to sell it to a developer that does senior housing or assistant living, and it doesn't cost us a penny to do it. And I would really hope that at some point somebody's going to Take the ball and run with it. Yeah, and I hope the council on aging would really push to have that done sooner than later because we haven't really done much for the seniors in a long time. That would be a nice yeah. Start. So the so the big issue there, you know, and I, I don't even know the property, but the big issue there is it walkable because they're going to lose their cars. They got to be able to walk around. It's got to be like a walkable area. So if we put them over here or over there, and you require a car to do it until Google comes up with a car that you're going to put in your coordinates and you're going to go to where you want to go, we have a problem. You know, and that's a that's a consistent problem. Yeah. People lose their license. You know, it just happens all the yeah. time. Yeah, but they also need a place to live. So I don't want to put them. I don't want to put them out on La La Land. You know, it's uh, at least those that can afford it can be out on La La Land. But those that can't afford it, you know, the core of the people that have been paying the property tax bills, put the kids through schools. We should be taking care of those people. That those are very important mm -hmm. people to us. And I like what Linfield does. You get into our half market um, housing because you were a Linfield resident. You know, that's, uh, that's a very nice, attractive offer. So, but, I, uh, you know, I, I'd like to talk to you about that more afterwards. Um, I can promise, you know, with my group, I, I consider myself a pretty logical person. Um, there's like 12 of us, you know, that meet all the time. So, you know, as we try to work together, I'm happy to support what you're doing and stay informed and, you know, be a, be a spark plug for whatever you're trying to do. So you don't have to get the word out yourselves. We're kind of working on the marketing and the getting the word out. and. We all share the same interests, so it's it's easy to get the word out. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for your time and indulgence. Okay, the next item on our budget <laughs> seems that way, right? Is to discuss the June town meeting warrant and vote warrant article recommendation. Mr. Gilbergo, how do you want to handle this? Mr. Chairman, through you. Uh, we had intended, I had intended that we would have a PowerPoint presentation to go through this evening uh, for a variety of reasons. We weren't able to do that. However, we do have motions in there for the articles for which uh, I believe the board may be prepared 
to make recommendations this evening. Okay. And so I would suggest that we take them in order. Um, right. They begin with, uh, with Article Number One, <coughs> which relates These to. These are uh, motions. These are. I'm, I'm going from the motions, motions yeah. themselves. That's probably the most uh, efficient way for us to go through. Them. Um, on page two of the uh, yeah. packet for the motions. First one is number six. Uh, Four. Uh, oh, no. It's article one. Article one is the the with yes, it's article one. <laughs> so I just would defer the, I'll defer to the finance director, but I don't believe we have any identified transfers at this point in time. Um, but it's likely that we may identify something when we begin to tell me. So the board certainly could make a recommendation at this point, but we don't have the amounts to report this evening. Um, I would suggest that since we don't have a number, we just pass over the article for now. Unless you have a... Uh, Recommended Tommy. You want to make a recommendation? Recommend this meeting. one I would recommend yeah. a town meeting. Just recommend a town meeting. meeting. Okay. Oh, okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend the town meeting Article 1, fiscal year 2017 budget amendment. Third or second? Second. Second by Mr. Ewell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 2. The snow and ice deficit, uh, deferred to the finance director, but I believe we have uh, a number that we're working on or working with. The number that we're holding uh, for the snow and ice deficit is $60,000 from free cash. Uh, that number is not, you know, definite at this point, but um, that will be more than enough. I believe right now the current deficit is 48000 and change, so there are some bills that the DBW director has on his desk um, that have yet, yet to be paid. So um, I believe at town meeting this way the should be made. We'll have a better idea by then. What are the wishes of the board? I have no problem recommend, uh, recommending. I, I don't either. I mean, Even though we don't have the final number, that something has to be paid. Recommending would be paid out of free cash? Yes, it's out of free cash. Free cash. The motion would only be to recommend at this time. So, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 2 fund fiscal year 2017 snow and ice deficit. Second. Second by Mr. Ewell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Article 3. This would be appropriating funds into the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund that, that to the Finance Director. The amount that we are proposing to transfer into the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund is $1,500,000. One million. Uh, let me just confirm that. Um, it's what? It is 1,051,637. And the funding sources would be um, 851,637 from free cash and 200,000 from the FY17 debt service operating budget. So what are the wishes of the board? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. The last part, the very last part. 200,000 from the FY17 debt service operating budget. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I think it's important to note that the recommendations by the finance director and the town administrator are in keeping with having a balanced budget for the June town meeting and the numbers have already been shared with the finance planning team right. in the school department. So everything seems to fit. Are we going to get them? Do we have? I haven't seen it. What's that? The fit numbers. So fit we have a motion to. Well, then it's a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have that in our packet? We have a presentation this evening to reflect the discussion that took place at today's financial planning team meeting, which I believe the finance director is going to review under the next item. Can I move to recommend? <laughs> Mr. Chairman. I wasn't sure. Mr. Oh. <laughs> Chairman, I move to. <coughs> How we can do that? Do you, yeah. Do you well, I, shouldn't we see the numbers before we recommend yeah. something? Uh, uh, what are you looking for, Michael? I'm sorry. Well, you want me to prove something I haven't. You want me to prove something based on something I, we haven't seen. Only you two have budget. seen it. And you've oh, the, the balance budget. budget. The balance yeah. budget. Okay. I, you know, uh, I don't know how you did it. I don't, you know, and I may not, you know, I don't want to be. I don't want to sound rude here, but I think it would be respectful for us to see it before we have to agree on this. So I'd recommend that we approve this at town meeting. How about if we uh, postpone further discussion of this, war this uh, right. agenda item until after the, the budget discussion? Do the presentation at that one. Do the budget presentation first. I think that 
more appropriate. I'd feel more comfortable with that. Yeah. This one item, or Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through, through you. Yeah. Again, I didn't want to tell the, the board how to conduct its business, but I do that, know that there are folks here for the discussion of one particular article. Does the board want to consider discussing that article while they're here, so that if sure. they don't wish to stay through the budget discussion, okay. they could excuse themselves. Sure. Which one was that? Feasibility study. Feasibility study uh, article. Twenty-six. What are we down? Yes. Town Hall Fire Feasibility? That's correct, yes. 26? So, again, I don't know whether the board desires to have a discussion at this point. I mean, there's been some reference made to the fact that we've not had much discussion. Well, I'm okay with uh, talking about that one, you know, but I, I agree with Mr. Fisco that, you know, maybe we should we'll make some more of these financial recommendations mm -hmm. that the uh, board be fully informed as far as... Just well, we could come back to that as well. I mean, that's, I just. I mean, this one here, I think, uh, I think this is going to be more philosophical than dollars and cents. Yeah. It, well, it's, again, it's one of, Mr. Chairman, through you, of course. You know, and I'm the one that pushed for this article because it has nothing really to do with 100% of knowing that we're going to have an opportunity to have the sale of the JT Berry. It isn't about spending that money. This is, just goes along with. The commitment that we've made to the fire department that we have to make some type of decision for the future of that building or, or how we're going to address the fire calls being on this side of town more around 75 percent or more and we talked about a west side station and it's sooner or later we have to make some decision especially with uh, bringing a new facility here with a thousand people on this side of town is only going to increase the call volume in this side of town so it, you know, and something like this usually typically takes three to five years to for us to really come to fruition. So the, the concept of asking for money for a feasibility study was to get the ball rolling. And I, I just don't see why we wouldn't want to get started. But if, you know, the majority of the board feels that this is a, a little too soon, then so be it. But I felt we owe it to the community when we went and fought, or not fought, but asked for the permission to sell the JT Berry to the Pulte Homes. The concern about public safety was one of them, and this is just following through on that commitment. And let's face it, Town Hall, we're, we're moving around walls <coughs> to fit people into closets. It, it can't, you know, we can't continue to do that. And the building's a little tired, and it's, I think it's a little sick as well, but I'm not going to go there. So that's kind of my pit, pitch on it. I think we have an ample opportunity here to make some progress on this subject. I think we're getting a little disorganized here. Well, I think, Mr. Chair. What is the article on the uh, study? Was the article 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I jump ahead? I thought we were on Article 26. Yeah, I no, no. We kind, kind of were, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, my mistake, the, uh, Mr. Chairman. No, I, no. No, no, I, I no, mean, no. I wasn't prepared that the board was going to be complete with its deliberations no. this evening. I'm only suggesting it be discussed because the yeah. right. there are right. folks well, here that wish to discuss it. At this point, I think we should stop discussing these articles and uh, have Liz make the presentation on the, the budget where it stands. Okay, I'm sorry. We certainly can do that, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I apologize. I misunderstood. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Oh, what? If I may. I think the the intent here was, uh, based on the input from the TA, was to possibly discuss them uh, warrant article number twenty six because there were people here. We, no, we've I been doing I, that. I clearly understand that, but we're jumping around. Michael wants to take a look at what the budget, what, how how the budget get balanced. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. All right. But Mr. Messeri, I apologize to interrupt, but I believe it was just. Um, the town manager, town administrator's recommendation was rather than have these fo folks here wait till we get to article, yeah. article 26, there is nothing in this budget that's going to be presented to us that's going to affect our decision on this. Okay. I think this is a, all right. that's all, that's right. the only reason. And I mistakenly thought you gave us the okay to go to article 26, which you didn't clearly, so I apologize. So no, I no, probably caused okay. most I, of the confusion. I, I, no, it's yes. the TA's fault. Let's I thought you know, know, I, I think actually, I think I let it be. That's okay. <laughs> 
All right, I, so this I don't have a copy of Article 26 in the. Uh, yeah. Oh, you don't? Yeah. It isn't in the motion. It's, it's in the warrant. In the motion. It's in the oh, warrant. Oh, okay. All right. It's all right. I was looking at motions. Okay. That's what I was I'll looking at, too. That's, That's why okay. I got a little. Yeah. It's, I put that. So, we are talking about Article 26? Yes. That, Liz? <laughs> yeah. Talking about Article Liz is getting her steps into it. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> now, may, may I? Okay. All right. Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Chairman, through you, so uh, a little bit of history from my perspective with regard to the Warren article. Um, I, I trace the origin of the article back to the board's strategic planning discussion, which took place in November or, or late October of last year, uh, well before we uh, ever really had any concept of uh, how the, of the magnitude of the Berry property transaction. And it was tied to a, a, what I believe is a need for a long-term planning effort with regard to the town hall. Uh, and it was also somewhat tied to the potential of, for the town hall to be uh, part of an overall uh, economic development strategy um, in the commercial corridor that we've uh, studied through the uh, study that was referenced in Mr. Wellner's presentation um, and some of the discussion that, that, that the EDC has had with regard to, um, excuse me, that the board has had with regard to um, looking towards economic development. So from my perspective, it originated, going back to the uh, the town hall discussion that took place in a strategic planning meeting and something I felt that in order to advance that discussion a Warren article was provided and to the point that was made the funding of the Warren article is not dependent upon the Pulte sale at all uh, it's proposed to be funded by uh, free cash uh, to a certain extent I guess it does relate to the revenue plan certainly because it's a use of funding at the June town meeting but I, I felt that it's a long-term planning process that we would be undertaking and that the, the time was appropriate to advance that discussion Concurrent to that, we had some discussion at the February 25th budget hearing where uh, we discussed the needs of the, of the, the fire department and the, the issue of uh, not only location but size, uh, and the apparatus floor, et cetera, the things that were all discussed to some extent on and off in capital planning and other meetings. And uh, it seemed to me that to, to prompt the board to consider these two items together was the appropriate next step. Um, that said, there are any number of other items that are capital in nature and relate to town facilities, for that matter, that have been identified in the presentation this evening. Um, certainly, um, there are a number of different ways. Some communities have conducted feasibility study for multiple uh, town-owned properties or buildings uh, with a goal of trying to allocate space accordingly um, across many different departments. Um, and we, so, you know, that's certainly an option that we could look at. But the, the reason that it appeared in the draft of the warrant at the last meeting was because of those conversations dating back to November, from my perspective, and the conversation that took place in February. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm of the thought process that this might be a little bit too early, uh, because I'm not sure if we really know whether this is the best location <coughs> for uh, a fire station. Is, what, here? There's no location. There's, just, there's no location. So that's what the feasibility I, I study is about. Rich mentioned it, but we've never talked about that. Right. No, that, that's, we, not, that's not actually it, fair because we have talked about it on this site over yeah. a couple of times. And that's, I it's think been what definitely yeah, brought up in conversation, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Right. That's what the feasibility study right. is to determine where it says, what town the town hall bill. fire station, which right. we talked about being here, yeah, potentially adjacent to the the other apartment complex. Right? We thought we've had the property back uh, here, exactly. Yeah. But I, I, I guess I, I, I don't. <coughs> I guess maybe I don't understand the, the 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 warrant. Then is the warrant to say just the idea of doing a um, funding a town hall and. Uh, fire station someplace in town, or is it right. here? Yeah. Uh, so I, I would think that we would need to know where we're going to put it before we do a feasibility study on the structure itself. Uh, that's what I would think. But the location, I think, is needs to be determined first. Mm -hmm. Mr. McGilbert would like to my, answer. My view of it is, and I don't see the fact that the article says the study for <coughs> Town Hall and Fire Station, meaning that it has to be the same building, number one. Number two is that what we're looking at is what do we need? 
Right. What kind of, how much space do we need? Right. And that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, you know, and what are the potential locations that we could put these structures? Right. And just well, to I didn't have see that, that information as part that of an right. overall plan of what do we do first and second and third and fourth? And we, we do know that there's an impact on the fire department associated with what we're doing you know, just at the barrier. And uh, we also know that there's not much we can do at the existing fire station in terms of improving space. There's no space for parking. Uh, the building, you know, for those that have toured upstairs <coughs> where they live, you have to scratch your head a little bit. And, you know, do we, and we're putting some money in there because we have to, but, you know, do we want to put a lot of money in there like we did for the police station? I don't think it makes a lot of sense in this particular case. So I think we need to get that information together as part of our overall planning process. And it's not that, at least I had never envisioned that we're going to tear this building down and we're going to move town hall to some place in the sky while we wait to build a new town hall. Fire station doesn't make sense. We did get a proposal uh, from an architect. We had some work done a number of years ago. I was on the board then, so somewhere in the past 13 years where they looked at building a new town hall in the back lot here, because we do own some land here, and then tear this down afterward. Uh, but, you know, I think it's time to take another look at the whole thing and, and get some kind of measure of what's needed. But the fact that that's going in there and I'm willing to support it doesn't mean that tomorrow I'm going to say, hey, well, we passed the berry money, we're going to take that money, we're going to build this. It makes no sense to me at this <coughs> point because we don't have enough information. And I think what Rich, you brought to the table is important because I think we have to look at the whole big picture, right, and decide how we can leverage the money we get for the bevy to in increase our commercial base to the point where we can give some tax relief finally yes. to those people that have lived in town long in the, in the little capes, right, that are in my age, right? Yeah that don't have an income stream and a struggle, right? So I definitely would, uh, I'm in support, a support of this. It's not coming out of any very money. Right. Uh, and uh, I think it at least puts enough information to give us a better picture of the alternatives that we might have. And then we can start to sort. And maybe we need to get together with the group and have a big meeting and discussion about this at some point in the future, <coughs> the near future. Sounds good, yeah. Jeff, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Okay, so I, I think it's clear that we're all on the same page, that it doesn't necessarily have to do with this facility or this location, but it's to identify a location and then work our uh, way towards a, a, a cost uh, of, a, of a given structure or structures. I, so I just want to make sure, because it didn't read that way. And if, and if I read... Uh, uh, Rich, correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. that I think that you're, at least that was the perception I got that they were talking about here and this location. I, I don't know if that was your thought process. That's what I originally heard was we were going to do it here. Right, location. okay, so. so, I'm so the, there may be other locations yeah. and it may not necessarily be married up. Right, so the, or not be right. so the perception of this was this location, but apparently, I mean, I'm in agreement with you, and I think that's what we all feel that it's the. Find out where first and, and, and I'm looking at a feasibility study to define what we need. Right. What we need for town hall for today and to cover a projected growth. Same thing with right. the fire department. And you know, how we okay. and what we do associated when we have a fire department here, we're gonna build a new fire department somewhere else and what we're gonna do with the old fire department. We're gonna shut it down completely or we're gonna use it as a backup or whatever. And I think that's what's important is to have that information so that we can make some better decisions about where to go, rather than just say, hey, we're gonna build a fire station over at the stop and shop parking lot or something, you know, and uh, you know, that's not right, and it certainly <coughs> doesn't get us to where we really need to be. Okay. Well, you just jumped over to me, that's why I was just okay. responding to Michael and then uh, Catherine. Oh, Catherine okay. had her hand up first. Uh, uh, then Catherine and then Michael. See, I read it the same way as you, too, so, and I, I know we did talk about, actually talk about this particular parcel that we're on being a, I do recall this, I don't recall if it was an EDC or a BOS, but this particular parcel being a potential parcel to have 
as a, a you know the intergenerational center, a senior center, veteran center, town hall, just kind of a, a, a city center, a town center basically, and that that it seemed to be a significant amount of land. Although I don't know how far it goes back, where it's not, you know, even the wetlands, wetlands or conservation lands, but that that this this possible sh should be focused in on too because we own it and what's that I wouldn't want to limit the feasibility to Main Street corridor. I'd want to want this particular parcel where we own so much of it to be to be looked at, especially because of the eminent domain aspect of Main Street. In that that all has a lot of it's water all over the place there too. Yeah. But I read it the same way, but my concern is who's doing the study, who's participating, how much <coughs> is it gonna cost out of free cash and the way that I read this I would not want to raise taxes to do this or, or you know, I would want it to come out of free cash if we had the availability of free cash funds. And what do you, what do you suggest as the amount that we're, we'd be looking at if, I, if through you, Mr. Chairman, I could ask the TA that. So I would be looking at uh, funding out of free cash um, in the amount of $75,000 for the study. And then we would go through a procurement process to identify a firm to assist with the study uh, for the facility or facilities. And that was uh, my intention, my, my recommendation. Michael. Yeah, so again, the concept would be from the, with that money, you start to generate your requirements. So I've met with Fire Chief uh, Warnick and Deputy Chief Galvin and a few of their staff members. And you know, when we had some initial discussions, they said, you know, you need to step back and look at this. Don't look at it for 2020. You look, really look at it for like 2040, right, the future. And then try to build those demands because they'll tell you right now, even with the studies that we've already done, that we need to do something on this side of town, right? I think we've done two studies now. And I'm sure Deputy Chief Gavin would be more than happy to come and brush those off and present them to the board at any time. So we know we need to do something. But now we can actually figure out what the requirements are. We talk about square footage because Fire trucks are getting larger, they're not getting smaller. And so the facility we have now could be the issue. But those are the kinds of things we need to generate. And then once we have all that data, then we can decide where the best location is. Because I don't disagree with Mr. O'Leary that maybe we also need to do a study on this property and how it relates to the commercial base and maybe it's better off not having it and we generate this as a new commercial base. I don't know, but those things all need to generate after we figure out what our requirements are. Because this is 10.4 acres. This may be too big when we get done with this study. I don't know. Uh, but I think you can't really figure out unless you have what the heck you need documented. Then from there, it, the next logical step is to do the analysis where and if we have to spend more money to acquire or we have to go into eminent domain to achieve what we want. So I'm just asking to please support this to allow us to get to this next step. And I think you'll find that the fire chief has done I've got a lot of work, or at least they're prepared to provide a lot of feedback to help us get this going. And I'm sure the town administrator, I know you've only been here three years or so, right? You know, so time flies by. But you see this building. You can see the demands. I mean, you're literally putting walls <coughs> up in hallways to build to, and tie it into a closet for people. You know kind of where you're going to be now and probably in 20 years from now um, based on our growth plans. So I'm off my soapbox. You know, by the way, I got to make sure, I don't know what you guys are reading, so maybe I have something different, but it says here, appropriate by transferring from unexpected funds remaining in warrant articles of previous years, okay, or appropriated by transfer from available sources of funds. So I, I maybe I have a different warrant article than everyone else, because I don't know where no, I think that when the articles were put in, the funding wasn't all figured out. A lot of the articles will read that way, Michael. Yeah, that's the generic language that we use. Yeah, this is the, generally the articles cover all options. Yeah. <laughs> generally, when we write a funding article, we, we leave the options right. open. It's in there. Michael, did you hear that? Yes, I did. No, I but it sounded like you, the articles that you guys had didn't have those other words in there. You just saw the taxation well, one. Raised, raised by kind appropriated, of, available yeah. funds. Blah, 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 blah. So I just want to make sure. Hey. So, that's so. Okay. Are we all squared away? I think so. I'm no, a, I Mr. am. Mr. Chairman. And I yes. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I'm not squared away. I'm not so sure that uh, I, I think we're, I think we can wait till October um, to make sure that 
we as a board have a clear understanding of exactly what we're looking for and why, and I think we all have a little different idea. Um, and I don't think we need to rush this uh, right now. I, again, it's not because something's going to happen overnight. It's not something that's going to happen uh, you know, three years from now, I don't think. Uh, so I, I think if we're going to, uh, obviously from a, a town standpoint, you know, town operational standpoint, we need to know what our needs are going to be and, and evaluate those. But um, with overall strategic planning purposes, maybe we want to incorporate some other things too as we, as we approach this. So to me, I just think it's a little bit premature. Again, we have, this is the most discussion we have had about this um, in years. Yeah. In years. And by the way, we've been talking about West Side stations for 40 years. Yeah. Uh, so well, things have changed. No, I, absolutely, absolutely things have changed. But uh, so, so again, I, I don't see the need to uh, put this on our plate this soon but we have other major issues pending before the June town meeting that we want to get support for um, in moving forward. Uh, I think those are more important at this particular point. I, I've won a not in support of taking this up now. Again, maybe six months from now is, is a good idea or a good time, but I think we have an awful lot on our plate right now that we need to address and um, which are all near term, you know, particularly in relation to the MWRA, water projects, um, a whole host of issues. Uh, and to me, I think we should just concentrate our efforts on that rather than putting one more issue on our plate this quickly. And I don't think putting it off till October or even next June is going to be that harmful. And again, and I, and I don't disagree that it's important, uh, feasibility study is important. But I think our administration has an awful lot to deal with. Um, and we're not, I'm not clear as to what, what we're going to be calling for in the feasibility study. And I'm not going to agree on it tonight, I don't think. Any other board members feel the same way at this point? I just, I just want to get a clarification from Steve, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, I understand <coughs> your point, but. I don't see how it affects June Town Meeting and the warrants. I, I, don't, I don't see that. I'm trying to grasp. We're, 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 we're asking the community to um, absorb an awful lot of information with a whole host of issues that we're facing as a community trying to move forward on things. Um, I think we should be a little more uh, focused on the things that need to be addressed immediately right now. Uh, in order to move this forward and not confuse the issues, not make people think, oh, here we go, and spend another $75,000 on this when you're asking us to, you know, uh, build a, you know, a water treatment plant and fight into the MWRA and a whole host of other issues and initiatives that uh, we've made a substantial amount of progress on. Uh, I, I think there's only so much that we can expect the uh, public to absorb and support. And uh, we have some, uh, and I'm looking to keep the community cohesive and together rather than um, add fodder or concern in relation to how we're expending our funds for specific projects and big ideas. I mean, this this is not, the yes, it's long term, but it's not a cheap project. It's not a cheap undertaking. And uh, I think if you talk to most of the people out there, um, there's a concern as to how much we're biting off right now. And uh, I think we need to focus on those issues which are going to uh, glean the, uh, the most benefit for the community long term and get those food, get those initiatives through. This can wait. What initiatives are you referring to besides water? Okay. Water, again, that would be sewerage, how, that, how that's going to be handled with the benefits. I mean, we're going to have to handle a whole host of issues. I mean, we have a lot going on. We have a lot on our plate. There's a lot of things going on. And I think uh, it's going to cost people. And I think people we're rightfully going to be a bit concerned in relation to how quickly we're trying to move our initiatives forward. I think we have to be concerned of that. We have to be cognizant of it. And again, I, I, I just think right now, I don't think we presented a very good advocacy necessarily or a cohesive message 
to the community on this particular issue yet. We haven't had enough time to discuss it openly and in public. And we're not going to have much time between now and the first week of June to do so. Yeah, we haven't talked about wastewater either. Yeah. So, we've been talking about wastewater for a long time. He is. There's nothing in here uh, about wastewater. Yeah. But if, okay. So, uh, I don't have the rest of the board members here, <coughs> Steve, but uh, uh, I wouldn't have a problem delaying this until October because I think it would give us some time after town meeting to spend a little more time and perhaps have a meeting with these people and see what else we should be thinking about as part of this whole thing. It may not result in having to do a study, but uh, with respect to some of these other items. But I think we ought to have that conversation. Uh, so, but I, I would only support that provided that we have some agreement that we wouldn't go past October. Because I think we need the information. And I agree that, you know, I think once you have the information and you get a better understanding, you know, we still may not be in a situation where we're going to do anything about it for several years. Because I think that what's most important about the uh, revenue from the very pro project is to use that as leverage to continue to grow our commercial base. And, you know, we know what that is. It's water, it's sewer, it's, uh, it's those kinds of things that will attract business people more business people to the community and develop uh, the community such that uh, we start to relieve the tax burden of the, uh, the homeowners of North Red. And I think that's been our goal yeah. for a long, yeah. long time. Yeah. Well, it's not a change a or anything. No. It's just that for the first time as a result of uh, the efforts uh, uh, that came out of uh, the Berry Project and the, the work that Michael did and uh, our state representative and the uh, community, uh, I mean the uh, commercial development committee and, and the board of selectmen and everyone else that put some time and effort into this, they finally give us a, an opportunity to make some, you know, I've been on the board for 13 years and we've struggled with the budget process every year and we've been limited and all of a sudden now we have an opportunity and we have to make sure we take the best advantage of the opportunity. And that doesn't exclude getting this kind of information because I think we have to put it on overall plan. The plan may be a 10-year plan. Some of these things may be 10 years out, but I think if we start to get some idea of what we need and how we're going to go about doing it, I think we'll all benefit. And again, just to, to follow up on that, maybe I'm going down a little different path and maybe we're on the same page here because we really haven't discussed it. Is it if we're talking about uh, forming a, a main street in a new downtown and uh, having a public facility within that within that area. We may be talking about eminent domain. We may be talking about eminent domain in order to uh, facilitate uh, the development of package treatment plants so that uh, additional economic development on this Main Street area can take place and allowing users to tie in. Uh, because we cannot necessarily uh, expect or um, expect private owners to buy into putting a package treatment plant on their own property and having their neighbors tie in. So those types of things are the things that we're going to be talking about and thinking about long term. Um, again, this facility and the location or relocation of this, along with the fire station, will all factor into those things. So it's, uh, uh, but, but those are all costly. Yeah, Mr. Masseri, if I could, yes. I just want to add, to, but the goal here was, and, and I'm okay. Yeah. The goal here was to build up what those requirements truly are. So when you know what size building you need, you know, the type of building that the town administrator believes he's going to need. Do we want to tie in something associated with adding a senior center to it? All those things tied to the building the requirements. Then it makes it easier to go out and find the location because now we know what it needs to fit. So if the fire department says they need five bays and they need 10,000 square feet to do that and they need a one-floor building or a two-floor building, we can get all that stuff worked out. That's what needs to take place. This isn't about circumventing or putting aside another project. This is just about building the requirements so we can move forward because these things have been discussed a long time. It's been tossed around a long time, but we haven't really defined exactly what those requirements are. That's all this was about. But again, if the majority of the board wants to push this off into October, it doesn't hurt anything. But no one's at harm. I, I'm not trying to say there is. I'm just trying to keep the ball moving. That's, That's what all. I'm saying. I said, I can support our, if, if if the board members wanted to hold back on this and wanted to move into what Steve is saying, I could support that given that we 
basically say, okay, come up, so we're going to put that article in. And by then, we may have it refined a little bit. And you're right. I think How are we going to be refined? We're not going to have any information. Nothing's going to change between now and October. Right. We won't know what the what we need. That no, we, that's what this is I about. I support waiting until October for some of the similar reasons that, Peter, I mean, that uh, Steve has uh, uh, noted, and that's related to all the other things that are coming up through the town meeting that we have to make decisions on. And uh, where's the rest of the board on this? I, yeah. I, I don't see why we have this. this this itself is almost a year old. And again, I'm the newest member here, but this has been discussed in strategic planning, the two strategic planning meetings with this board. EDC's been identifying town parcels. I think that we have a number of different individuals quite capable of participating in what they've already accumulated for information to be able to get this moving along. So I don't I don't think that we're fighting off more than we can chew. We're trying to get a direction here and, and I, I think that we should we should move it forward because there's been an awful lot of participation from an awful lot of different individuals in com committees and commissions here that want to see things being considered and moving forward. And I'm not disagreeing with you that there's not a lot of significant things that we are moving forward on, but I think that, that I think that this is one that, at least from what I'm hearing from feedback, people want, you know, want us to move forward with some of this. All right, so we've planning got- Planning concepts. Right now we've got two things. We have an article that uh, we can leave in uh, and not pass over any in the warrant for, uh, for uh, June town meeting, or we can pass it over and put the article in for October. So where's everybody? Yeah. Give me, raise your hand if you join. Uh, I, I think the October gives us more time to privilege this coordinated effort together and, and create a, uh, a more clear vision and plan for what we're looking to do. There's no doubt that a lot of people have looked at different aspects of what we're talking about here, but I don't believe that there's been a, uh, a clear public uh, airing and uh, of it uh, in a in an organized fashion. To move forward. I just say, if we're going to fight, fight this off and move forward with it, I think we should do it with some more um, public meeting on clear understanding as to where we're heading with it. Uh, again, this is the most discussion we've had about it. You know, so to me, I just think we, October, again, I'm not looking to, to kick this down the road any further than we, than we need to, but I just think, uh, I don't believe there's been enough uh, discussion. I don't think that uh, the Parties with the vested interest or concerns uh, have necessarily been able to air it publicly uh, to help uh, formulate public opinion in support of it. And I think putting it off till October would, would allow us to do that in a more organized fashion and engender more support. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Steele. Yes. Our next strategic planning meeting is, would be when? What one? Probably right after October town meeting, I think. Yep. Typically. We're trying to get it done before the town administrator sits down right. and discusses right. the budget objectives for the following year. So, look, we, we beat this thing to death at this point, right? If you're in support of keeping it in there, just raise your hand so we know where we are. And if you're okay with moving it to October, Raise your hand. Well, Jeff, you haven't done anything, so where are you? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pick one. I've been going like this and this, and you know, I, I don't I don't see a problem keeping it in, and I don't see a problem pushing it to Well, make to a October, decision so. so we can move on. We have a lot of things on the agenda here. And I have a power play here. Let me use it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, think, uh, I think we can go with October. Okay? I'm so okay with October. I think it's three to two to move it to October. Pass it over, pass over. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll or just not move we'll on. Pass over the article. So we move to remove it from the from the warrant. Yeah, but the warrant's already. Been. No, no. Oh, no, the warrant has been signed. I'm sorry. No, that was the warrant. That was the yeah, just to remove it from the warrant. So, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I move to uh, remove Article 26 from the warrant. Second. Second by Mr. Yu. And included in the October town meeting warrant. All in favor? Second. Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? No. no. Okay. 
motion passes three to two. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I don't actually have a motion on that. So no, will Steve you just made that. It. Okay. Oh, I just made it. Yeah. Just to make sure. Okay. What do you think you'd like us to go next, Michael? Budget. Take the budget presentation. The budget. Would be appropriate. Is work. Uh, as uh, Ms. Rourke is approaching the uh, podium through you, Mr. Chairman, so again, as I put in the meeting notes, we had a financial planning team meeting this morning where uh, Ms. Rourke and I uh, finalized our recommendations with regard to the budget, at least uh, where things stand uh, right now. Uh, this presentation is updated to reflect that conversation, uh, as I committed to in the meeting notes, and then we have uh, some recommendations with regard to the overall reconciliation from the town's perspective of the operating budget. And with that, turn over to Ms. Rourke. Okay, um, so we have updated the FY18 revenue plan up to represent um, new figures that have been added into other financing sources. So the last presentation that we had on this was on April 3rd, and here we are on April 24th with some updated figures. So it's pretty straightforward. We've gone <coughs> through these. Um, you have the tax levy, new growth. Those figures have not changed since uh, the last presentation. Uh, neither has debt, uh, the debt service uh, for debt exclusions. That number has not changed. The numbers that have changed, that have been updated, would be state aid um, for Chapter 70. Uh, this is according to the House budget that was released a few weeks ago. However, the House budget did not um, recommend any change in unrestricted state aid, so that number has stayed the same. Um, and as I said, Chapter 70 increased slightly. Um, but overall, our local aid, which includes unrestric unrestricted general government aid, Chapter 70, uh, state-owned land, library uh, offset receipts, and um, veterans benefits reimbursements, was a reduction of probably about $5,000. Uh, Chapter 70 increased 24, but veterans benefits um, decreased 30,000, so it was in the mid you know, maybe 5,500 was the decrease. Um, local receipts has stayed the same, and the biggest change would be other financing sources, which we were discussing within Article 3 under the transfer to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. This has um, increased since the April 3rd meeting by 351,637. Um, we come down to the bottom part, the budget section. The fixed cost total has decreased since our April 3rd meeting, and the decrease was driven um, by a reduction in the general liability and property insurance. There was um, a credit that we were able to use um, to offset the FY18 budget of approximately $30,000, and um, there was also an increase in workers' compensation insurance, um, but overall it was a a slight decrease. So the town's level service budget um, is noted there as well as the school's level service budget which was presented I believe at the April 10th workshop that they had. Um, so currently as of today the school's budget gap is 66,000 and the town has um, a surplus of 57,000. And we'll we'll get into the fifty-seven thousand in two more slides. And uh, let, let just let me comment. Uh, I attended the uh, school workshop this afternoon, and they closed the uh, sixty-six thousand dollar gap by making some adjustments. Mostly, in fact, they're all basically in, in expense items. That's great. So, great news. Yeah, you know, they've taken some risks, of course, but mm -hmm. they have. Uh, balance the budget based on the results of the financial planning team meeting. There's potentially something that could occur if you, uh, you know, you read the, uh, the complete house budget. The uh, uh, now I got to think of the, the funds that get paid for the uh, special the circuit breaker circuit breaker. And the house budget is budgeted at full hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Whether or not that means too much for them because there's always a year delay. Correct. But there's potentially maybe some help there, mm -hmm. which might allow them to put some of the things back. That would be good. Right. 
So that's where we are there. Very good. And I, I take it that the numbers we talked about this morning included the house budget for the uh, Chapter 70 increase. That is correct, right, which yes. Which is about, what, 38, 40 grand, I think. No, the Chapter 70 increase for the house budget was 24,000 mm -hmm. and change. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jim. Uh, Liz, just a quick, on other finances, I thought I heard you said there was an increase of about $300,000 plus, but I'm, I'm seeing 50, 500. Those two 50. columns are comparing FY17 to FY18. Yeah. That's last year over this year. Yeah, right. I'm the talking number. the increase that I'm specifying, it has to do with the April 3rd presentation oh, for okay. FY18. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Am Any I other questions? questions? Just quickly on the school side. So they are no longer going to explore laying off or replacing the custodians with an outside service. That's not on the table or is it off the table? The, the part that, uh, that's interesting you bring that up because a gentleman was out in the, I don't know if he's still here, but uh, he was out in the corridor and he wanted to talk to us about replacing the custodians at the school and I said he's in the wrong location. Uh, but the part they're replacing is the, is the evening cleaning aspect, I believe. It's not the entire custodian workforce. At least that's my understanding. I don't know any more than that, though. Okay. And I don't know if they've changed their mind on that or not. Thank you. Okay, so this is just a quick snapshot of um, some potential free cast uses that are have to do with the monetary warrant articles that we are discussing this evening. And these um, have not changed uh, with the exception of the snow and ice reserve. At the April 3rd um, meeting when we gave this presentation, the snow and ice um, amount that we were carrying was $150,000. We've now reduced that to um, $60,000. And you can also see that the debt capital stabilization, uh, we had been carrying $500,000 there as a transfer in, and that is where the $351,637 comes into play. Um, you know, at one point we had been carrying 500,000 for snow and ice, then we reduced it to 150, and now we've reduced it to um, 60,000. So these are potential, uh, but as, as we know now, the town hall fire station study um, will come off of this list. Any questions? So through the budget hearings that we've had, um, whether they were the Saturday budget hearing or the, um, the three Monday night uh, budget hearings, some of these items have, have come up and the town administrator and I have made note of them and made a list um, with one exception of one item that has come up through the capital process as well as some notifications that we've received um, from Verizon, which that would be the last item. I will let the town administrator speak to these uh, budget adjustments. Thank you, Liz. So just uh, going from our notes and from some things that have developed uh, over the past few months since we started the budget hearing, there were a series of recommendations that were offered the board this evening for um, uh, finalizing the budget uh, with uh, the final actions to be taken at the May 8th meeting in two weeks from this evening. So I'll just take them from the top. Uh, we've been working with the Public Works Department with regard to some um, uh, updates to the use of technology in the department. There was some discussion that took place at the budget hearing uh, back in uh, February. And uh, uh, at this point, based on the available funds, we're recommending that the 50% uh, share of uh, an update to the technology used for the time card system come out of the general fund. This would be matched with a 50% share that would come out of the water enterprise as well for a total of $16,000, and that's based on the quotes that the Public Works Department has identified. The second item, you remember from the discussion, uh, the department had in there a couple of uh, spreader control updates that would uh, allow us to reduce the uses of uh, salt for uh, treatment for ice and preventative treatment, and I uh, credit Mr. Lafferty, who's in the audience today, for the success of that program. And 
decrease in the volume that we're using. This would allow us to fully outfit the vehicles that currently participate in uh, sanding operations, assault disp dispensal, uh, dispensing op alter, uh, operations, and the amount of $16,000. The O5? This would do all of the trucks, that's correct. Great. Uh, th this, with what's already in the budget, would do right. Right. additional okay. the trucks. Well, th that's great, that's great. Thank you. Uh, the building department <coughs> salary pool, um, we do have a forecast of retirement taking place in the spring of next year. This would allow us to bring on a uh, successor in the department to work alongside uh, the department head for, uh, for a period of four weeks, approximately. Um, the EDC uh, and CPC professional services appropriation, again, based on the board's discussion, uh, much of the work and the activities of the EDC has been funded out of the J.T. Berry appropriation that we had, which was uh, specific to that, um, to that project. Uh, this would uh, effectively be some uh, seed money for the, the continued function of the EDC as it uh, potentially transitions into other uh, avenues over the next year or so in the amount of $2,500. And the last and um, candidly the most difficult uh, item to discuss is uh, public safety communications. So the board members may be aware that we had uh, going back two years now, a, a pretty significant capital project to replace the current uh, copper wire-based communication system for our public safety radios with a, a so-called microwave system. And that's not microwave the appliance in your kitchen, but microwave the use of uh, microwave communication between the um, towers uh, located on our existing uh, water towers and in high points in town, as well as two additional locations uh, to uh, maintain and improve our radio communications for our police and fire department and to a, a certain extent our DPW as well. Um, this proposal was initially tied to the fact that, well, two things. First, to expand our system to include two new proposed sites, we would need to um, update the infrastructure that's currently located at the police and fire station so as to accommodate additional sites because that, that existing equipment is essentially maxed out in terms of the number of sites it can host. Um, but second, uh, secondly, related to that was some information that we had going back a few years that Verizon may potentially be uh, phasing out its use and reliance on copper line within cities and towns in Massachusetts. And uh, despite multiple conversations with representatives of Verizon over the past few years where they indicated that that was not going to be the case, in a letter sent at the beginning of the winter time and then updated again at the end of the winter time, uh, they relayed that they were effectively going to be, well, at first no longer maintaining and then uh, subsequently removing the infrastructure here in town for radio communication. So it's a legacy system. It's been here for, for decades and it's tied to Copper Line. I don't think anyone's necessarily doubting the fact that there may be a more reliable or um, uh, updated technology for communication out there. But uh, we're concerned with regard to the notice and with regard to the timing of, uh, of this. Uh, They've indicated to us that they may be completed removing the copper line system as soon as uh, this December. So with regard to that, it's caused the Capital Improvement Planning Committee to look closely at not only the uh, improving the equipment and potentially additional sites, but also this uh, large scale capital project to replace the communication system uh, as a whole with a town operated system. However, as a precaution, in case we don't go down that that path, there is an option available to us from Verizon for replacing the copper lines with the um, more expensive T1 connection line. And that number there, 25,200, is the approximate cost we are pro projecting for uh, three, for basically nine months of the next fiscal year to allow our system to communicate via the Verizon system. Uh, this is something that is uh, developing, has been developing for the past four weeks or so, and will continue to develop, uh, I think, in the, in the coming weeks as well. But at this point, uh, I think we feel that to responsibly to ensure the continuity of the discussion, so we need to have this project um, funded somewhere. And at this point, uh, the project would effectively be the uh, paying for the lines and the monthly subscription for communications. And this is the one area where I'm a little bit scratching my head saying, well, okay, they're going to take some copper lines out. They're going to force you to use the copper lines because the copper line is how a T T1 line works. You know, I have a little bit of knowledge on the area. And uh, it seemed to me that I could get a Comcast broadband or a Verizon BIOS connection. What I don't know is what additional hardware would have to be added to you know, make that all work. But it seems to me that that's a better solution than creating a microwave, but I may be wrong. You know, it depends on 
you know, if you paper the microwave, then you know, once you get it in place, the cost of the microwave is the electric power you use. But I'm just concerned that there may be some other options that no one's looking at. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, I think we all share that concern. This is a bit of uncharted territory <coughs> for us, and I, I give all the credit in the world to the fire chief and to Firefighter Carter, who have been paying close attention to this over the past couple of years. I think there's more discussion to be had. Um, I, I don't want to represent that this is the solution, but this is something that I think from a, from a planning standpoint to ensure continuity we need to be yeah, prepared. The dike stopgap measure to allow us to communicate. I, I'm just concerned and upset that Verizon gave us such short notice. Well, and, uh, and I don't know if we've, uh, I, I know you articulated it probably to them verbally, but I, I think we should, uh, in writing, uh, express our, our overall consternation with the lack of notice. And uh, I, I just think we should go on record. Well, I you know. do too, and I, I'll agree right with you, Mike. No, 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 no rush. I'm not going From anywhere. my perspective, you know, the people that have a T1 line, which is the most expensive things that people use in the past, and they've been weaned off because you can get a broadband connection, right, which is a lot less money. But what a T1 line is, is a bunch of copper wires that go in and handle multiple channels. In other words, 64 telephone lines is, is essentially a T1 line. And, uh, you know, is this some kind of a move on their part just to extract more money from us? Yeah. Well, they're costing us more money in the you know, we had you to move can, up our can, timeline because yeah. we had assurances from them that it was further down the road. And from a capital planning standpoint, we were talking about phasing it in over a longer yeah, period my, of time, my, and that would be enforced. You could have a broadband. Spend a lot of money. You could have a broadband connection and pay thirty, forty dollars a month for it, yeah. you know, versus several hundred for a T1 line. Uh, I just don't know. I'm sorry, Michael, but go ahead. No problem. I don't believe a utility can cause a public safety issue. I, I can't imagine Copeland and Page would ever allow us to fall in this situation. So we should check with legal counsel, and then our legal counsel needs to send a strong letter letting them know that just because they moved their timeline up cannot affect us in a public safety manner. And we should request a, a, a stay of this until we get our plan straightened out. Yeah, we, we have another expensive issue coming our way because Comcast is saying at the end of the contract, right, you can't use the fiber lines right. for That's communication right. between the buildings, right. you know, which means we got to come up with another solution. We are running into a public more, safety more money issue. for that. Uh, I think it's time we go fight with them. I, I don't I think, think we have a choice. We have I to. Think, I think we know, need legal counsel. a Comcast representative in Boston that's supposed to be looking at the, uh, basically the government side of things. I think we ought to have a meeting. I, yeah, no, I think uh, we should contact our legislative delegation. A special le legislation is needed. A State Department of Public Utilities uh, needs to put a halt to it in order to allow for adequate notification uh, for communities to uh, to address the situation on a timely basis. You know, what's that? But the notice say? that we've been given is not does not allow us to do it there on is, a timely. I believe there's a notice requirement in our contract, right? Uh, th this this particular service would be separate from our, uh, our cable franchise license. Th this is effectively uh, uh, a telephone line but account, basically, uh, per, per location. Um, does not make the, the notification any less ex unacceptable. I mean, certainly, to have it display out the way that it has is, uh, candidly, it's surprising to me that it hasn't gotten more public attention. Um, uh, it's it's going to be, I mean, to me, this is, should be uh, a PR nightmare mm -hmm. for utility like this. I mean, have you heard from other communities that they'd be an impact in the same you know, way? Uh, I, candidly, I have not. Um, I, I, and I'm surprised. Transcri to use transcript here because we need a headline here. <laughs> I'll put a, I'll, I will put a field alert to the town administrators, town managers in the uh, in the area. And uh, I can tell you, I did speak with Representative Joan as well, who was uh, certainly concerned to hear this and uh, committed to assist. And I told him I would you know, provide him the paper trail that kind of explains how this all unfolded and our disappointment. And I'm sure that, yeah. uh, that he'll be helpful in facilitating a discussion. It's not not good. So the, the, the long and short of that's certainly a lengthy explanation, but it relates to the operating budget because I think we need to be planning for a potential expense. And I assume you're done. I, I just it's just one yes. thing I'm missing that came up in the conversation when we had the DPW presentation here on that particular Saturday, and we talked about the acting foreman or supervisor position. Have you guys come to resolution? And if you have, shouldn't there be an adjustment here? 
speaking to the position? Uh, yeah, uh, what, we've been uh, we've had an acting supervisor, right? Is it a supervisor or is it foreman? A general foreman, I believe you're speaking. You're speaking yeah. To. Uh, the short answer is no, we've not concluded it. I, I'm not sure that there's going to be a need for an adjustment out of the operating budget. It's probably something that would be more than likely handled out of the salary pool. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't see it as having a direct impact here, but uh, the short answer is no, it has not been resolved at this point in time. It needs to get resolved. Just speaking on my I'm not going to speak for the board, but it's gone on long enough. And if it's got to be adjusted, then it needs to come back to us, or at least these numbers get, get adjusted. That needs to get worked out. It's been a long time. I hate to put the pressure on you, but it just doesn't make sense why we still haven't seen that rectified. I know you got a lot going on, but that's acting position shouldn't be acting that long. I think perhaps a discussion uh, from a collective bargaining strategy standpoint might be in order with regard to that particular okay. issue. Okay. Uh, that's fine. If it's got to be adjusted, though, this is the time. I was saying that the salary is covered. In the okay. salary pool. Okay, I, I don't believe I can't imagine that's true, but okay. Well, that's what you said. I, I mean, all right. I disagree with the town administrator. It's okay for us to have a disagreement. I assume. I'm not, I'm not sure that we disagree <laughs> um, with regard to this. It just may not be as apparent as you want to see it yet. Okay. Right. <laughs> I guess I'm in the dark on. You all set? I, apparently, I am. Yes. I, I think your question was a financial question. First, if I yes. understood it correctly, and yep. I believe, and I'm looking. It's at a management and a financial question. So I'll take the, the financial aspect of it, and the finance director may or not may not hear me, but there there is a a position, the general foreman position identified in the budget with the salary at the appropriate grade. That, so that is accurate. The position is funded. The yeah. management end of it, uh, again, is a, sta a standpoint where we have somebody who is certainly performing the position, and I think performing it very highly. But I, I do think that there's some collective bargaining strategy for us to have as a, as a whole a, a discussion to have. Okay. All right, thanks. Anyone else? And I'll ask Mr. Lafferty, would you have anything to add to that? Or is that? Okay. All right, thank you, Liz. So we, we want to go to back to the, these articles? No, no. Or? I'm supposed to. What? I'm supposed to the end of it? Yeah. Well, There's still some more. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that, that concludes the presentation. I mean, it would be our intention to have the... Uh, uh, the finance director, and you see the assistant finance director is joining us this evening. Lori, and thank you for being here this evening. Uh, Liz uh, will not be uh, joining us at uh, what I believe will be the next meeting, which will be Monday, um, May uh, 8th. Um, so we were, you know, as we've done in the past, looking to make sure that we felt that there was a consensus of, for support amongst the board so that we can yeah. generate a budget document and have that ready to be voted on at the uh, May 8th meeting with a recommendation going in the warrant and ultimately printed in the warrant. So we think we've captured, I mean, we would have loved to have captured everything that's on there. I tried to prioritize based on the comments I heard and what I believe our operational needs are, and that's what resulted in the highlighted items being recommended for funding. Michael, I, I saw in the uh, packet uh, a uh, public hearing schedule for our meeting on the 4th, sure. which is a reorg meeting. Yeah. Oh, a uh, Board of Appeals hearing, you're saying? Oh, is that a Board of Appeals hearing? I'm sorry. I was thinking it was a Board of Appeals okay. hearing. No, I, there shouldn't be a Selectman's hearing scheduled that evening. That, that's generally a preserved ready. agenda with only reorganization considered. There may, there may be some ancillary related actions on the organization, but nothing beyond that. It was Board of Appeals. I'm sorry. To your point, though, we may not be able to use this room. <laughs> what? To your point, we may not be able to use this room that evening. That's okay. We can find a small office for that. I would room five. Thank you, Liz. Okay. Yeah. Uh, shall we continue going through the uh, articles? Is everybody up for that? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Would we move on for articles? Uh, we should be on Article 8. We did 26. We jumped to 26. Right. We did. We had done seven. So I think we're up to eight. We're on eight. I can be corrected. Eight routine but selection of town officers. The board generally recommends. Yep. Kate, you want to read that in motion? I'm, I'm sorry. We stopped at Article Three. We don't right, have so I was gonna. Oh, I. We should be on fire four right now. Right now we Six, did seven. Even, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. looking at the, on the ones that are in the motion. Oh, sorry. There's some others that are not. Sorry. 
So we can move forward. We're at Article 3. Forgive me. And My mistake. Stabilization <laughs> fund. And at this point, uh, are we putting money into the stabilization fund, Michael? Yes. Is that just in there in case we Yes, there would be a transfer in, and the transfer in directly ties back to the revenue and expense plan that we just presented here this evening. Okay. Into the capital improvement stabilization fund. Correct. Oh, capital improvement. I'm sorry. I'm looking. Yes. So we are putting... Um, at this time, uh, mm -hmm. there, w there might be additional funds um, put in there due to the article being taken off of the warrant. Um, so, but at this time, we are putting 851637 from free cash, which was on the presentation, which I will put into Dropbox so that you all have that. Um, and it's 200000 from the debt service um, FY17 operating budget right, did that already. for a total of $1,051,637. Okay, that's too many. Okay, we did that. Okay. So uh, that's the amount at this time, um, but you can still recommend the article. I'm just letting you know that's subject to change. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend. Uh, article 3, Section 2017 appropriate funds to capital improvement stabilization fund. Recommended town meeting or recommend? Recommend. Recommend. Okay. Well, maybe in addition to it. I need to drink my coffee. Recommend. <laughs> okay. On the motion, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Yule. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 8. No. So what can the town offices do I hear a recommendation? Um, I right. hope it's recommended. Oh, we Mr. Chair. Are we going to do number four? Um, are we going to do article four? No, I'm only going through the articles that are, there are motions. Oh, okay. Okay. So the next one's Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend article eight, select town officers. Second. Second by Mr. Ewell. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, that's unanimous. Article nine, here an act of the reports of the town offices and committees. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend out of the line here and ask our reports of town officers and committees. Recommend. Uh, second. Second by Mr. Yule. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 10, authorized Director of Public Works to accept easements. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 10, authorized Director of Public Works to accept easements. Do we hear a second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I guess it's unanimous. Article 11, authorized treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements. On the motion. This is Nana Pelli. Are you reading the motion? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend. Recommend Article 11. 11, authorized treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 12, authorized Chapter 90, highway construction. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 12, authorized Chapter 90, highway construction. Second. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Yule. I question. Question. Okay. Can we can we get an update on last year's chapter ninety, what we approved and what you know, just an update on what was done and what's remaining before June town meeting? Yes, it may be appropriate to offer that update during the review of the capital improvement plan since there'll be a request for town road fundings and all of the uh, as part of that plan. So yes. When, when's that projected? This is the state May. portion of it, May. Michael. May. Yeah. Thank you. On the motion, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. Opposed? Unanimous. Just for the record, the amount for that is $508,338.27, and the Department of Public Works has submitted a $300,000 town road appropriation request, which is pending before the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Article 14, fund construction of the pump station. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 14, fund construction of the pump station. Second. Second by Ms. Seal. Do we have a dollar amount? We do, we do, Mr. Chairman. Uh, bear with me one moment. 
believe it's 2.55 million dollars um, identified in there and uh, this is the first of three articles that relate to the MWRA project which we'll speak to in a broader broader update um, as a next agenda item well, one thing I would note is that the uh, town's consulting engineer continues to work to uh, update those numbers so r right now we're carrying a number of 2.55 million dollars for, for that portion of it but that may be updated as we get closer to town meeting um, similarly is the case for Reading Water System and North Reading Water System uh, appropriations. One thing the board may want to consider too is whether to consider these as a single article. Now I put them on the draft warrant as uh, multiple articles, but they certainly could be um, could be handled differently than that, um, uh, where they all relate to the same project. Well, do we want to wait and recommend, you know, leave the recommendation for a town meeting, and we can change that at a future meeting if required? We can pre present the most updated information at the May 8th meeting, and the board can decide that. So, why don't we just pass over the, this one for now? Article 15, same thing. Uh, oh, yeah. We got a motion on the floor that was seconded. I'm sorry? The motion I'll, was seconded I'll, I'll, uh, to recommend it. So, uh, I was going to say, we, we already proved. Well, that's good. We, I, mean, I have no problem recommending it. Obviously, we're going to recommend it. I, I was just saying, if we wait until we get all the information together, we won't be going back and re-recommending it. Right. So I'll take back my second. It's up to you, though. Whatever you want to is, do is okay. Is there a desire to consolidate the article into I three to one? I don't know. I, you don't, I would like Why to. Why not? I, well, you mean the all or nothing approach? Yeah, I well, suppose. I mean, well, you one, can't have one without the other. If one passes, the other one's going to pass. I know the number looks bigger going up there, but. I mean, people are going to do the mental math. Uh, it just seems to put them all together makes sense. Is there Can't any, do one is there any impact from an appropriation standpoint if we do separate articles? Is that better or worse? Or does it make no, a difference? I, I don't have a problem one way or the other. No, I know. I'm just asking it's separate line items way. as far as what's appropriated and then what's left over and what we can do with it. They would have to be similar to um, the FY18 capital expenditure article. They need to all be listed. They can be part of one article. But they need to be listed separately with whether it's an authorization to borrow, you know, the funding source, water infrastructure stabilization. So there has to be three different amounts right, with authorization. Why don't we leave them the way they are then? And why don't we take all Article 14, 15, and 16 and leave them as they are and cover them at our next meeting? Okay. And we can put the numbers together. Mm -hmm. There may be some more information about funding at that time too. I, I would withdraw my. So withdraw the motion. I would draw. Yeah, yes, that yeah, would be. I would draw the motion. My but second. Can we just make a determination if we're the majority would like to see them combined into one or not? So we can at least give some direction. Can we at least I'm make? Sorry, I'm, I'm, can we at least make a determination whether we want to combine them into one or not? I, I think it would be better based on the fact that different funding sources. So that decisions. Leave them separate. Same same funding sources. Same funding same sources. Funding. They have the same funding? Yes. So we can, we just need to have one, we can have one more in article, right. but they have to be listed, you know, in a row with the uh, funding source next to it, which is authorization to borrow, but they have to be three different authorizations to borrow. We can't just put them all together and bond council won't approve that as one project. If, yeah. If that makes sense. Done this like before. Yes. Put them together, yeah, we did, that last, yes. we did that last year. Yeah. So I, we, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, just was going to be my point. So. We, we did this similarly last year. You remember we had the uh, FEIR and the design work as well yeah, the as the for the mm -hmm. the pump station um, acquisition. That was all one article itemized by. Uh, I only put them on the draft warrant as three separate articles uh, in the event that the board desired it, wanted to consider them separately. Uh, but I don't think there's any issue with considering them together. Everyone in support of putting them together? Yes, yeah. I am. Sure. Okay. All right. That takes care of that. Thank you. We skip, Mr. Chairman, through you to Article 21. Yes. So Article 21 is appropriation of uh, band premiums to reduce middle high school project borrowing costs. To the that the band interest um, premium that we received last June um, for the five million that we banned for the high school middle school project was thirty thousand eighty nine dollars and eighty five cents. So we need to appropriate that uh, band premium to the high school middle school project, which mm -hmm. would reduce um, 
our uh, long-term yeah. borrowing. It has no impact on the budget. It does have an impact on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes or no? Ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So a couple of grains uh, of sand. I, I, well, we're on the subject, and I, we don't need all the detail, but there are a couple of things going on. Obviously, the school project is winding down, and eventually the uh, school building authority owes us money, right? Mm -hmm. and, from, uh, and I don't know what the time frame is for that, and I don't know if we have all that information locked down. But in the interim, we're doing bans for hopefully for what we're going to get back from them, right? And it's costing us interest, right? So. Part of we the $5 million ban that we have out there right now for the high school, middle school project, part of that will become long-term debt. Um, yes, I understand that. And not all of it will be, so. Okay. So we continue bans until we screw away with the state and then. Correct. Finish the project. Right? Yes. Okay. So that. That is what this $30,000 is. So in this case, I guess we're recommending this article. We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I move to recommend Article 21, appropriation of band premiums to reduce middle and high school project borrowing costs. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 22, fund retirement obligations. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 22 fund retirement obligations. Do we have a number for that? Yes. Okay. The amount for the retirement obligations is 207179 and the funding source is raised and appropriate. Oof. Okay. Do I have a motion? This is both town and school. Do you know how it's broken out? Yes. This is Metafelli? It was... Michael I just question. have a question. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, Mr. No, I'm not, I'm I was not hearing you, Michael. I, I apologize. I'll, yeah. you know, I'll talk. I had asked what the breakout was split between school and oh. town. One moment. It's no, right. Loading. Did you get your answer? The school's portion is um, 133.179. Thank you. You, you, you do know, Michael, that the, uh, uh, the school pays these out, uh, or I, I guess the teachers, they get paid over a three-year period. That may not be true of all the employees. Okay. Thanks. Okay. On the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have heard the, heard the motion. Sorry. I made a motion, but I, it was not seconded. It's not I seconded. Seconded by Ms. Eagles. On the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 24. Appropriate funds to other post-employment benefits trusted trust funds. What are we doing here? The finance director. The amount is 300000 and the funding source is raised and appropriate. And I just want to make note I, I was incorrect um, with the amount of 133 for the school retirement. Their amount is actually $74,000 this year and the town's amount is 133. Getting back to Article 24, $300,000, what's the source? Raise and appropriate. Raise and appropriate. This is an increase um, over FY17. We um, put $250,000 into OPEB in FY17 from raise and appropriate. We've increased it to $300,000. And this number is based on the adjustments that we got based on Parkland Insurance Company and uh, em no employees have been hired, right? Yes. And is it fully funding though? It's not fully funding it. How far, how short are we from the actuarial study in the appropriation? Hundreds of thousands of dollars, not a million dollars. It's a substantial number. Mm -hmm. This is in line with the, uh, no. the board's previously uh, proposed strategy of trying to cover the cost of the employees. All that. Right. No, is it so? That's what he was asking. That's what I'm asking. asking I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the $80 million liability. Yeah. I'm talking about no. the new employees that right. were hired. That was the goal, to fund fully mm -hmm. the staff, the new staff. And we are short how much? No, this will. Fu this is the plan to fund the new employees' health Moving insurance. forward. Yes. yes. So 300 uh, covers it. Yes, that piece. It doesn't cover the... We know. 
No, it doesn't do anything for before. No, you get, yeah, 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 we're all trying to, you know, They're gonna just stop the bleeding that. here at this point. That, that was the strategy. Right. But I, I thought uh, I thought it was we were a little bit short when we were talking. I, about. I think that the shortness was referred to the first year of the funding of this, where we cut it in half because of an excessive right. snow and ice deficit. Right, but I mean, as and far as, but discussion. I thought uh, with the actuarial study, I thought it was 328000 not 300 or it was $28,000. Well, we had been carrying 250 We had to do, increase it to 300 based Correct. on the actuarial study. Yeah. Correct. This so number in, reflects that. In FY16, we appropriated 125000 Right. Which we cut in half from 250 So then FY17, we did 250 And then when we had the um, presentation of the actuarial study um, back in last June, um, we had to increase that figure from 250, which we had been carrying in the revenue plan for FY18 to 300,000. Okay. Yes, Michael. You can't use free cash for this at all. You can. Well, combination. I mean, we have the 75,000 dollars we're not going to use. Mm -hmm. So we, we might we need that for October, though. Yeah, I, I would keep it in the in the till somewhere so that it's available. All right. Can we all agree then? We're going to hold it. It's not going to get spent on something else. We put it in the minutes. That we all agree I on that. I would say we, through you, Mr. Chairman, respectfully, I think that we would, we can agree. But I would suggest that we agree on May eighth, rather than agree this evening. All right. There's still a couple more weeks to go. I just don't want to see it get disappeared. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I want it to go here. My intent and my support of moving it into October wasn't to use, reuse that money for something else. Was some craziness. Make sure it's in the minutes. What? <laughs> just making a joke, Bob. Sorry. All right, Rita, I think Rita has a question. What? I think Rita has a question. What is the question? Yep, Rita. I thought she was giving yes, us a finger. Rita. I'm sorry. Can I speak to that for a minute? Yeah, sure. Yep. Well, you have to. I'm sorry, but. Oh, no, I want to make sure I'm supposed to come here. Rita Mullen, 29 Abbott Road. Uh, what I'd like to ask tonight, part of the reason that our group was here, would it be possible at the June town meeting a lot of the things that we talked about tonight um, have a list at every t at the every town meeting, and I would love to see the selectmen address eight or nine of the items that could be coming up. And I think what Michael had said tonight, and the TA, I know we talked about uh, whether it's in the town hall, have these things on it so that everybody he has heard about it, because being on a lot of committees. I get frustrated, as I'm sure you are, Michael, on EDC, this and this and this and all the committees, that when you come up before people, and you'll have selectmen sometimes, finance, school committee people look at you and go, I never heard of that. I didn't know what you were doing that. And I think you kids all know at some point you've talked about all those things, let's say, that Rich spoke of tonight. I would love to see it at town meetings because the transcript does a great job of putting it in the paper. Selectmen list six things that you're looking at that are future items. So it never should be a shock that when we talk about a fire department, when we talk about the town hall, when we talk about the wastewater, because as you all know, there are about 250 people in town that go to meetings. And I think this way, you talk about it, I, I would love to see it on there, so you go down and it's, I, I definitely agree with what you said tonight, Michael, I want to see these items on the October meeting. And you shouldn't keep passing them off. We've been talking about the town hall for an awful lot of years. They've been talking about the fire department for an awful lot of years. And then you kids put in order which ones are important, but you're right. You can't make a good decision unless you know how much it's going to cost, and then you decide where it's going to go. So I would love every town meeting that the selectmen continue to talk about those things so that we can uh, address them. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Prescott. Mrs. Mullen, after October town meeting annually, we've been getting together and updating our strategic plan. And, you know, it, June town meeting may be an opportunity for us just to present that one page of our objectives, maybe even our progress assessment as well, just maybe those two pages that may answer a lot of this, what you're suggesting. Well, I think if you do, I think it'd be I, great because then people can't. really, we don't do it any other time. People can't hide behind other, you know, I, I've been there when we did the, the field. And I happened to sit beside somebody at a, a football game that said, this isn't right. So-and-so is not able to play on this field. And it's like, oh my god, where does everybody get all this information? But this way, you kids come up, you tell us what's going on, beautiful. The paper puts it in the paper and continue to update the things that you do. And I think 
it would be much easier than when you're ready to ask for however much money it is. And I agree with you. If you're going to ask for some money, you don't know what the town hall is going to cost. It doesn't matter where it is. But you should put everything in there. And then as you're looking at that, you say, wait a minute, there might be three other groups that had some input for it. Then you're discussing all those. Because you can't have everybody in the same room. But I would love to see it if, if, if it's twice a year that you talk about it under committee reports. It's a selectman's committee report that you're talking about things that we're still looking at and expect us to start talking to about it again. Thank you, because I appreciate you kids do a lot of work and you're all in the same meetings, so you, you're all sure maybe of what we're talking about, but sometimes the people in the town hall, uh, town aren't, so thank you. Right, thank you. Let's see, where are we now? Article, not the last part, the H. Uh, retirement obligation, did not have yeah, appropriate 24. funds. 24. Other we functions. still have a motion on OPEB, right? On we didn't make it yet, but right. yes, I move to recommend. Article 24. Second. 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 Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Article 27. On the master plan. Mr. Chairman, through you, this is an article submitted by the Community Planning Commission. Uh, Liz, correct my numbers if I'm wrong, but I believe it's $85,000. They have a pending grant application right now that could possibly defray that cost, and we await word, but right now we're carrying the full cost. I believe the application was for $25,000, if I remember correctly. And that money is coming from what? Free cash, if Free I understand cash. correctly. Okay. On the motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend Article 27, Fund Master Plan. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. The motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. We still have a few more. Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, just to defer to the finance director for the upcoming uh, articles related to revolving funds. All the revolving funds, why don't we do them all at once, right? Right. 28 to 39. Article 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. 40. 28 to 40. No. 28 to 32, is that right? 36. 40. I have 40. 40 is authorized naming of distance learning room? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it goes on. Oh, all at once? <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> we, we're supposed to do a meeting. First, it's past 10. We're supposed to do a meeting. We're going to put agenda. them all in one article. Oh, we can't, though. Got to work in the morning. Well, we can recommend articles 28 through whatever. No, no, no. no. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, we're just recommending. Uh, article 28 through Article 36, typically, even at town meeting, oh, are awesome. recommended as one. In one motion, I shall sure. say. Okay. And then, uh, maybe this is to recommend those articles. Mm -hmm. On the revolving funds. funds. Yeah. Conservation Damon, Rain Barrel, Recycling, Department of Elder Affairs, Emergency Management, Youth Services, Library Activity Room, Board of Health. And those are articles. 236. 236. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 39 is uh, zoning. Uh, I think we will hold on that one until we you know, get some input from the, uh, we're either going to get it from the CPC before the town meeting or we'll make a decision at town meeting. So we'll take that up at our next meeting to determine what we want to do. Article 40, authorized naming of the distance living lab. That's going to come from the school committee. Recommendation of town meeting. Yep. For both of them? Oh, well, we have something on the zoning bylaw. Okay. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Why don't we just uh, yeah, set it for a recommendation at town meeting? We can always change it. Yep. Article 39, not the Tainer motion. This is an Article 39. Did recommend you say we're meeting? Meeting? Would you, you make a motion to recommend it? Do you want to put it on hold? Just, uh, my guess is we're not going to have, they're not going to have a public hearing. We're not going to have, you know, probably town meeting. Yeah, so recommendation at town meeting. Okay, you're saying to recommend it to town so meeting. Okay. The motion should be to make recommendation to town meeting. Oh. We're, we're confused. I move, well, I thought you said hold, so. 
Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend the town meeting, Article 39. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Yule. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. And the last article that's on our list for tonight is Article 40, authorized naming of the distance learning lab. That's yes, we'll make a recommendation at town meeting. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 40. Second. Motion, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That concludes those motions. Uh, yes, motions. I think the balance of them are going to be on our next agenda. From May, that's correct. And Mr. Chairman, just a, a notation with regard to Article 40. Um, those of you may observe that that was not previously on the list of articles. It was something that was uh, provided to me by the uh, superintendent of schools. It was approved by the school committee uh, in advance of the deadline, but not submitted to us uh, in advance of the deadline of. March 20th, if I recall. Um, so if it looks new, it's new for just that reason. The board would need to obviously accept placing it on the warrant. In my understanding, it was just not submitted to us as a ministerial error by the uh, school office. Okay. Mr. Mr. Yule. Yeah, i uh, just make sure. I know what you said, but I want to make sure I understand. So they approved it prior to the required date. That's my understanding. But they did not submit it. All right, and they're obviously adding it now. Um, do we have, just for the point of uh, making sure we're doing it right, do, do we have a copy of the minutes that reflect that? I do not have them, but we certainly could secure them. Good. If the board would like, I could attempt to secure them before the signing of the warrant on May 8th. It was discussed the financial planning also uh, this morning. And they also mentioned it at the pre meeting. Yeah. So, so it, it, it seems that, they, okay. They, they okay. know what I just wanted to name yeah. it for. Yeah, I, I just. But they haven't made it public. Yeah. Right, okay. So, so Mr. Chairman, I, I, I move to uh, authorize the inclusion of Article 40 in the annual June town meeting warrant. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, I didn't hear I'm sorry. That, that article was not uh, submitted. No, what was the motion? It moved to authorize the inclusion of Article 40 in the annual June town meeting warrant. Thank you. Aye. It's a motion made, <laughs> requested by the school committee. Okay. I okay. didn't hear it down here. I apologize. Okay. So the, I'm not uh, using the mic. On the Sorry. motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. All right. Next item on our agenda is what? to review the status of the what? MWRA can, can water make, project. Yes. Can I make a suggestion? I think Barbara Stats is here. Do you think that we can address uh, the reasons why that she's in? Uh, oh, I'd be happy to do that. I'd be happy if you do that, too. <laughs> Sorry, Barbara. I know you love us, but... <laughs> well, sorry for Mark and sorry for Andrew too, but. <laughs> uh, that would be number thirteen. Oh, excuse me, no, it's uh, number eleven. Yes. Second. Second by Mr. Young. So this is just a regular reappointment for Joyce Jenny. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, the Board of Registrars is comprised of four individuals uh, representing the two major political parties. So we have two Democrats and two Republicans. <coughs> and we always have to maintain that balance on the board. Joyce is the Republican member whose term expires this April, this month. And so the um, Republican Town Committee did meet to put forward a name for recommendation, which was Joyce's again. And she is being recommended by the Republican Town Committee to um, renew her term for three years, which goes until 2020. Okay. 
I would certainly yeah. recommend. Yeah. As a liaison, I would certainly recommend the appointment. Right. Or reappointment. Right. And we appreciate her serving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah, she, uh, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Joyce has uh, been dedicated in what she has done mm -hmm. and what she does for the, for the, uh, f uh, for the voters and, and uh, making sure that all of what Barbara Stats wants to have done, that needs to have done, is done. <laughs> we work collectively and collaboratively, no, but she is. I Barbara for keeping you here, but something was only going to take a couple of minutes. Right. Anyway, but, um, on the motion, but, uh, we have a motion. We do. Yes. Yeah, I, I seconded. And you I seconded. Se it, I seconded. Right. Now, and then Barbara but I think Mayer's Barbara wanted to. Sit. I just wanted to thank Joyce too, as, as you said. You know, she has been a dedicated member of the board. She's always attending the meetings and um, uh, participates uh, willingly. And um, uh, so I appreciate her service personally for for being so dedicated to the board. Thank, thank you, Barbara. Barbara. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Yeah, we also have Martin's pond. No, no we have one more unexpired term. There's one vacancy and two. Yes. Um, two individuals. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You should go back to the. Uh, so I'll I'll put forward a, a little brief explanation for this one. This is um, to appoint a Democratic <coughs> member to um, complete a, uh, an un unexpired term of a uh, previous board member. Leona Gallo has served with us for two years as a Democratic member of the Board of Registrars, together with Kylie Gamelin, who's the other Democratic member. Um, Leona's term would go until next year, but for personal reasons, she has resigned from the Board of Registrars. So right now, we have that vacancy to fill an unexpired term just until uh, the end of uh, her term, complete term, which would be in April of 2018, at which time then we'll come forward with another um, Full motion to, to fill that term for three years. So this is just for one year to complete an unexpired term. And I believe that we have two uh, people that the Democratic Town Committee have uh, recommended for appointment. Um, but only one vacancy. One correct. vacancy, correct. And I believe Mr. Uh, O'Leary is the liaison to the Board of Registrars and may have been in touch with the two individuals. Yeah, I'll wait for the motion. Okay. We'll move to nominate both, and then you... Yeah, you're right, and then the board will just vote. All right, Mr. Chairman, I move to place in nomination the following names for appointment as member of the Board of Registrars to fill an unexpired term through April 1st, 2018. There's one vacancy that two are Gloria Master of Nine Traveled Way and Carol McGillicuddy, 16 Marblehead Street. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I'll, so yeah, I'll second the motion. Okay. Uh, and again, I know both individuals very well, and uh, I will be recommending uh, Gloria Mastro. As most of you know, Gloria, she has been uh, serving in various capacities and volunteer uh, positions on different uh, uh, boards and committees uh, over the years, and she would like to uh, fill this unexpired term, and I think she'll serve, serve as well. And uh, the Democratic Town Committee has recommended either one of these two individuals. I thank uh, Carol for, for stepping forward, and again, there'll be uh, next year maybe consideration for uh, a full term. But uh, at this particular time, I would recommend Gloria Mastro. Okay, we'll start with you then. I'll do a roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary. Gloria Mastro. Mr. Yu. Gloria Mastro. Mrs. Manapelli. Gloria Mastro. Mr. Prisco. Gloria Mastro. And the chair votes Gloria Mastro. Thank you. That's Thank it. You. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the Agenda here. Back to eight. Go back to MWRA water project status. Oh, oh uh, hold on. Don't we have uh, oh. Oh, Martin's um, Pond? The uh, Martin's Pond, yes. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend the following individual for reappointment to the Martin's Pond Reclamation Study Committee for a term to expire December 31st, 2019. Lawrence Susie for Alston Road. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Who's making a recommendation on the individual? It's only, it's a reappointment. It's a reappointment. Yeah, okay. I just want to hold the liaison was. I don't remember. But it was. Mike? Mike? No. Okay. 
I, I recommend, like yes. Further discussion on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. All right, let's go back, see if we can move ahead here. Review status of the MWRA water project. Mr. Gilberto, you put it on there for a reason, I gather. Yes, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Um, and uh, here this evening, our DPW Director, Andrew Lafferty, and Water Superintendent Mark Clark, thank you for staying with us this evening, gentlemen. Uh, really, the intention was to update the board with regard to the efforts related to the MWRA project uh, and then to speak to a, a couple of meetings that were held recently with the town of Andover uh, as well. Uh, so first, with regard to the MWRA project, um, we have uh, obviously the Warren articles pending for funding the construction of the pump station and the uh, improvements to the water mains in the town of Reading and the town of North Reading. And our consulting engineer, Wright Pierce, has been in uh, communication with the town of Reading, as I understand it, with regard to the design of improvements there, which I believe are at 75% uh, at this point. So we are certainly progressing along with regard to that. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, one of the biggest concerns, as the board knows, was uh, identifying a location relative to the pump station. And we do have that location secured. And so uh, there's been uh, some discussion underway with regard to, to that site. Uh, probably the most significant thing that's ongoing right now is our uh, the permitting activities that Wright Pierce is undertaking um, to uh, respond and submit the uh, final environmental impact report relative to the transition um, to the uh, MWRA, and that's something that will be submitted to the uh, to the uh, Water Resource Commission as well as the DEP. Do I have the right agencies, Andrew? Um, uh, we're projecting uh, later on in the spring. Um, so that will be submitted to be a comment period that will take place um, and then they'll respond back to us and depending upon that it will dictate uh, the uh, potential uh, awarding of the, uh, um, the, the appropriate permitting. Um, so right now the, the plan at this point is again as the board knows continuing forward with regard to those design and permitting activities to request the funding at town meeting. As we draw closer to town meeting there may be some changes with regard to the, the dollar amounts as uh, more information is available particularly regarding the design. Uh, but right now, based on the best information available, the estimates that we've been carrying in a capital improvement plan are the numbers that we've been uh, working with. Um, right now, the projected uh, construction timeline, depending upon the results of the permitting, would be for um, the, the later part of the calendar year, um, with construction taking place uh, beginning the very end of the construction season and continuing uh, through calendar year 2018 and into early 2019. Um, the second piece uh, which we wanted to, up, up to update the board to was that uh, Selectman Prisco, Masseri and I and uh, Andrew and Mark and Wright Pierce uh, met with the town of Andover roughly four weeks ago I believe it was and then again with them um, roughly ten days or, or so ago. Uh, the second time I saw Prisco, I know you weren't able to be there but Mr. Masseri was able to join us and uh, you know, we've effectively are following up on their previous indications that they're able to provide our water under terms that are advantageous to the town. And so uh, we have expressed to them on uh, multiple occasions at both of those meetings that you know our concerns are certainly their ability to provide us our long-term reliable water source, um, first and foremost. Secondly, the cost of water, the cost that the town could expect to pay per uh, 100 cubic foot or a million gallon, whatever the rate may be for water and uh, also uh, establishing a, some sort of a, an arrangement that's uh, permanent. Um, the, the option that we're looking at right now, MWRA, would effectively be a permanent solution uh, for the town's uh, water supplies with uh, uh, a large volume available to it. So at the most recent meeting, and Mr. Masseri uh, or Andrew or Mark certainly correct me if I'm wrong in uh, conveying it, but at the most recent meeting, uh, uh, there was some discussion with regard to the uh, water, the availability of water, and the representations made to us were that the capacity of the Merrimack River was sufficient to provide um, all of uh, the town of North Reading's water needs. Um, so from a standpoint of capacity, they were very confident that they had that access to that water supply, the ability to store the supply at their uh, filtration plant, uh, the pond outside their filtration plant, and the uh, ability to generate that supply. Um, there would need to be some capital improvements that would need to be made to their um, their system to convey the water from their distribution from their filtration plant to the North Reading line at the two existing locations. Um, and that capital improvement obviously would be uh, work that would need to be done 
to in accommodate the greater capacity that North Reading under the scenario they propose would be drawing. Um, the issue of uh, permanency uh, is a bit more challenging. Uh, there, were there are restrictions out there with regard to an intermunicipal agreement and as uh, the board has discussed on many occasions, we're looking for a long-term water source and not necessarily something that's going to be a 20-year IMA uh, subject to renegotiate renegotiation. And while I think that there's some hesitation, um, they did express that they'd be willing to look creatively at a long-term solution that we believe would likely require legislative action um, and legislative en endorsement. Uh, never mind any of the associated environmental permitting that you'd be looking at with regard to drawing from the Merrimack River Basin and drawing additional water from the Merrimack River Basin into the uh, to the town, which is in the Ipswich River Basin. And so uh, they also proposed a rate, uh, which was effectively 95% uh, of their Tier 1 rate, which is their lowest rate, and I think we figured that out to be about $2.95, uh, if I remember correctly, based on their current rate. Um, and uh, over a term that would effectively be a 99-year term. That was the concept that was discussed broadly. Um, certainly a number of details with regard to that that we, we expressed that, you know, were open questions for us that, uh, that, <coughs> that while it was certainly a step in the right direction, the issue of permanency and, and, and you know, who's going to account for the long-term costs associated at their filtration plant should improvements be needed the breakdown of any other costs associated with this, a lot of open questions. So really, the reason it's on the agenda is to provide this update so that the board has all of the, uh, the current information. We weren't necessarily looking for any decision. We've told Andover we're going to continue down the path of the MWRA because that's the direction we believe is most appropriate for the town at this point. Um, you know, and while we certainly are appreciative of their efforts, uh, there's more evaluation to be done with regard to what they're proposing. We do have a meeting scheduled with them next Thursday afternoon to uh, hear more about what they have to say. Mr. Chairman, through you, if I could stop for a moment, I'd you know, look to Andrew and Mark. If there's anything that you think I've missed or would need to add, you know, certainly feel free to, to weigh in. I think they, well, uh, they have to say what the, the, the one other issue is the interbasin transfer and upgrading that. Mm -hmm. And what one might run into if the state is so much in support of moving us forward with the getting an interbasin transfer for them too, but we have to expand the interbasin transfer we, that exists is only 1.55 million gallons, I think, <coughs> somewhere in that range. And that would have to be increased if you continue to go down the path of hand over supplying all the water. And Ms. Masseri, I think you bring a great point, and Mark, I know you submitted some information to us uh, this morning with regard to that. If you want to you know, certainly brief the board, feel free to. Or Andrew, I'm sorry, no, through you, Andrew. <laughs> Uh, so I dug out through my files this morning and came up with a, it was an email that actually the town of Andover had sent to the Water Resources Commission asking what would be required for us to increase our interbasin transfer permit. It's effectively 1.5 million gallons a day right now. Uh, I don't have the document with me, but basically it said if we were to increase it by less than an additional 1 million gallons a day, so we could basically go up to just under 2.5 million gallons a day. They consider that an, what they term an insignificant increase in, um, in a, an interbasin transfer permit. Much less review goes into that. They said they could likely come up within a 90-day period um, to agree to, to increase that. If we were to go above that 1 million gallons a day, it would require an EIR type, type file, uh, filing with them which is, you know, it's a six, six month review, and then they have a 60 day comment period. It, it's a much longer uh, and more involved uh, process. Which we are in the midst of right now for the MWRA project. And again, the additional capacity that we would be looking for from Andover would exceed the million, do million gallons? No. At the end of the build out, it would slightly exceed yeah, with that. Right, yeah. Can it, it again, my other question, through you, Mr. Chairman, you know, my recollection is is that uh, Andover has also has limitations on their capacity to draw from the Ipswich River, actually from the uh, Merrimack River. That's and claim not. I, and my my understanding was, and I don't know where I where else I would get this information, other than listening over the last few few years, is that for what our needs are and what the MWRA is offering to us, 
which would be looking for a similar amount from Andover, that would put them very close to their capacity and their ability to draw from the Merrimack River, thereby limiting their ability to grow their own system internally. Did that come up at all? Or? That, what they told us they could draw from the river was a number that was far in excess of yeah, unlimited. We would them with. Which, that's what I thought I heard. My understanding of it is their comment was the, the capacity of the Merrimack River is, in their terms, basically limitless um, in terms of they look at the, the seven-year, 10-day low flow period, and that's, that's a lot of water. So they, they wouldn't have to draw from the river during that period. They can pump into their pond. They can draw off their pond for an extended period if there's a short-term drought. Um, what I believe you're referring to, Steve, is they have a water management act permit just like we did. Currently, their average daily demand is about 0 0.8 or 800,000 gallons a day, 0.8 MGD below. Their average day is 0.8 MGD below what their uh, water management act permit is. We would be taking up a significant amount of that. So, what's the difference between the intubation transfer and a water management act permit? Intubation transfer is this is the max you can transfer on any given day. So, our basically, if we're looking to draw two and a half million gallons on our peak day demand in the summer, that's it. Water management act is more an average over the the. Uh, so, we you can easily go up a million gallons a day in your peak day, but your average day only goes up maybe a, a tenth of an MGD, it's, it, you know, because it's spread over the whole period. So we've made that argument a couple times with is the water, is the Interbasin Transfer Act permit a daily max or is it just an annual spread out? And, you know, the, the read we've got on it is that one is the daily max, which is why we would have to go back before the Water Resources Commission to address that issue. Mr. Chairman, through you, we didn't necessarily bring this up. We don't believe that there's any decision to be made at this point in time. Uh, it's more uh, informational. Um, we will meet with, uh, planning to meet with Andover on uh, May 4th. And uh, again, I can't stress enough because of the timelines associated, the work continues with regard to the MWRA project. Um, and we told them that we had to keep the hit moving ahead because we have a schedule. And uh, we need to stay, keep to the schedule. Again, that schedule was driven by, in part, by a previous agreement that we drew right. up with the town of Andover. Right. Yeah. That's what put us on the timeline we're on. Well, the letter from July 2014 is what put us on this path. Well, I think uh, they're living to regret it now, and but it's unfortunate it put us into this path. So I don't know why we're having another I think meeting. It falls apart because they're going to have difficulty getting a approval for 89 or 99 year. But what's the point of having another meeting? Well, we committed that we would brief the board and set a date to uh, to hear whatever other detail that they could put forth with regard to uh, you know, business terms, uh, length. I think I got the impression that there was some consultation that they may need to do on their end uh, with regard to what was uh, what our concerns were. Um, you know, again, we'll take direction accordingly from the board, obviously. What you missed, Michael, was the meeting was at their pump station. Mm -hmm. Yep. Fairly elaborate setup there. A lot of computer monitoring of everything. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, did you get a tour of it, Mark? Or? Uh, I've seen it a couple times over the years. So oh. it, I mean, it's it's a modern state of the it's it's not brand new, but it's a modern state of the art type of treatment plant. Um, they're one of the first treatment plants to use ozone, which is uh, you know it's a fairly powerful uh, water treatment. So when people think, well, they're taking Mer Merrimack River water. Ozone is a state-of-the-art type uh, treatment for river water or, but you know, water. But wouldn't take the iron out of the water that's coming out of our pumping um, stations. <laughs> it will be a real expensive way to do it. Yeah. Kate has a comment. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I think we, we, we would want um, to, you know, keep the affiliation for the redundancy purposes, right? We, we talked about that before. Yeah. We have, yes, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, um, certainly it's something that we believe would be advantageous for both communities. Um, not necessarily required as part of our harmony, at least not for, uh, for, for both ratings purposes, but uh, you know, uh, ideally 
it would it would be advantageous if uh, uh, you know it would be advantageous if we had that connection as a backup for so us and for Reading potentially. Mr. Chair, at the meeting, Michael has a Mr. Chair, at the meeting we were at, they did inform us that if we did not. If we decided to go with MWRA, then the option for us to connect to them for emergency purposes will be off the table, unless we pay them a tremendous amount of money for infrastructure upgrades that they're going to need to keep that pipe available to us. Yeah, they, so. they Who made that representation? No, they're, you know, they're trying to pressure us into going down the path that they'd like us to be on. So. Was did you not? Select, oh. It would have to be. Make that representation. I, you know, I, I think the, the one thing well, that. Hold on, before you. Did I hear wrong? Uh, I, I don't. I think the concept was that if they were going to be a backup, that they, it, it wouldn't be free. Um, in other words, that they, there would be some sort of a subscription or other compensation we'd have to pay well, them. I, I Michael, don't think we uh, I have it right here. It quote free, it. Right? I quote it right here. Andover will not back up North Riding without the same infrastructure improvements and annual maintenance. That's exactly their words. Not our. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking to disagree <laughs> with regard to what you're not just well, thinking. I think it's board. worthwhile to, to do the meeting because not only for redundancy purposes, but just neighborly mutual aid type of things that we we also provide. So I think it's good to keep that rapport going and hopefully in a positive well, direction. You know, if we want to sewer Route 28 to the Greater Lawrence District through Andover, we have to maintain communication and work with them. I mean, there's no way around No disagreement that. there. But. You know, I, I mean, had recommended to them that our time best spent I, right now I would spent be on a lot that. of time, and some other members of the board did, spending over four years to get the five-year contract done, dealing with <laughs> a particular select one on the board. I won't tell you, I won't mention his name at this point. And, you know, they were just totally unreasonable. And, and the concern that I have going forward, I mean, you know, if we could get to the 99 year agreement, maybe it doesn't matter too much because I won't be around. But, you know, uh, if, if you're stuck with it, even a 20 year agreement, then you, now you're going against another board of selectmen who may have different ideas. To me, that's enough to say I'd rather spend a little more money and get onto the MWRA in the long run, we're going to be better off, period. Fact that they seem to be changing their attitude about even the rates at this point, you know. I, I think you know, being a representative of the community, you know, we have an. Uh, I'm talking about all of us. Uh, you know, we have an obligation to to look at and carefully assess what's best for the community. <coughs> and uh, you know, maybe maybe this thing will go a little further. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. At this point, I think I, I know. At this point, I think we have to continue full speed ahead. Anyway, yes, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, I think we kind of predicted where we we'd be where we are uh, a couple, a number of years ago, because um, especially when we had the issue with the um, turning off of the spigot, so to speak, uh, or the closing of the spigot, uh, uh, you know, with the uh, handover. But so I, I think we anticipated we'd be at this point somewhere along the line. Um, you know, when we talk about you know st uh, strategic plans for the town, we, we talk about programs that we uh, uh, how we want the town to grow. Um, it, it becomes important that we always maintain our relationships with our surrounding communities in such a way that it's it's a positive environment, not a negative environment. Uh, you're right. I think that that, and I agree with Mike to, to some degree that that you know well, why are we having the conversations? Because I think that the uh, the MWRA situation is a a a profoundly beneficial route to go for us. Okay, but we continue to have the conversation with them because with our strategic plan and, and with our town growth, you're right. You know, we have Main Street, and we might be able to use the water connection uh, up uh, uh, at, at the, at the uh, town line. So having the discussions, having good relationships with our neighbors 
it, it's, it, it's very important. But I honestly don't see us not going with MWRA. I, I can't imagine that at this point. Okay, so any other questions or comments? Uh, yeah, we can move yeah. on with our agenda. I just, have, I just have a comment in relation to it. Uh, I think it's important that we continue the dialogue and, and have the meeting with them. And again, as it unfolds, and uh, they certainly have uh, changed their attitude towards uh, dealing with us. Uh, again, we are taking the route that we're taking because of uh, previous discussions we had with the town of Andover. But you know, they've had some sort of an epiphany here, and that's okay. And if it's to our benefit, then it's it's our obligation again to take a look and see what they have to offer us. And and I would encourage us to continue to do so. And while we've made some uh, major investments uh, towards the MWRA, and we're still continuing to move forward with that. Uh, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be considering uh, some other long-term offer from Andover if it's if it's viable, and uh, from a timeline standpoint, if it works. Uh, so I would encourage uh, the administration to continue and the board to continue uh, the dialogue with Andover. But the burden's on them. I mean, as far as the timeline and our ability to uh, react to any proposals that they have that we would consider to be meaningful and in the town's best interest. So um, I wait to hear what they have to offer and timelines associated with it. And again, uh, to the chairman's point, um, you know, we don't want to have to be dealing with um, the vagaries of changing in boards and administrations up in, up in Andover, which we would not have with the, with the MWRA. That's, that's important for us uh, looking forward. So if they can come up with some sort of a proposal, and again, uh, capital improvement-wise is certainly significantly less you know, in the short run to continue uh, doing business with them. But uh, in the long term, meeting the demands uh, that we foresee, you know, let's see what they have to offer. So I would continue the dialogue, but the burden's on them. And I think the administrator has conveyed that. And I'm sure Mr. Prisco and Mr. Masseri did too, and then they were up there. Well, it's, it's up to them to, to provide it. So I think it's incumbent upon us to, to do the due diligence, to uh, respectfully consider their, their proposals. And uh, meantime, we have to stay in the path that we're on because they set the timeline for us as to what this agreement that we're currently operating under has forced us to make major capital uh, you know, investments moving forward in order to meet our needs. This has all been thrust upon us is a direct result of their reaction to our needs and their ability to, and at the time, their assessment and their ability to, to meet our needs. So uh, I await their proposals and I look forward to hearing them. And I would certainly consider them, but uh, in the meantime, we have to continue on the path that we're going. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, I just wanted to, to clarify my remarks. I, I, I'd be in favor of continuing the discussions just for our economic redundancy plan, not for shifting away from the direction that the path that we've now invested in. It, you know, when I first joined, that was years into the making of what they could offer in terms of this yeah. contract, and it, it was years in the negotiation to arrive at that contract with them. So whether it's an epiphany or not, that was years in the making of what they could offer yeah, the us. Epiphany is recent. Yeah. <laughs> so I think for redundancy, I think I think we heard in the fire department budget we go quite a bit there for emergencies, you know, mutual aid there for things. Of the one. Right. So so I think it's great to you know, again, reiterate that as being good neighbors and redundancy for us would be emergency if there's some issue with the connection to MWRA. So when I say the continued discussion, I, I would say for that purpose of achieving that goal and not necessarily veering off the course, I wouldn't be in favor, of, like Mr. Yule says, I would not be in favor of veering off the course that we're on to connect it with the MWR. We, we have so much now invested in that, so much assistance from the state on the, in that, so much assistance from Reading on that, that I'd be, I wouldn't be in favor of sh shifting off course at this point. Just one more add to off of Kate's. Um, you know, I'd like to get back to the focus of bringing or entertaining what it would, how we could work together to explore this option of tying into the Greater Lawrence Sword District at some point. I think those would be valuable discussions because they'll have a direct benefit of it as well. Where we, you know, this is so far down the road that 
I just don't I just don't want to see them waste any time. I don't want to see them putting a lot of valuable resources for us to turn around and, and end up saying no. And it just doesn't seem right to me. It seems wrong to have them kind of spin their wheels to continue to provide us this data on water when I agree we're just so far down this path that they put us down. And I don't think they disagree with us on that. I mean that letter that the DPW director wrote us uh, maybe he regrets it at this point. I know if I were him, I would certainly regret it. And we, you know, we tried to talk some sense into him. Um, Mr. O'Leary, you, we were there, I, I believe, and Bob, I know you were there a few times. This, we told him this is where we we're gonna be. I think for mutual benefit, let's focus on the emergency tie-in and let's start exploring the SOAR tie-in. I think, and I know the city of Lawrence would appreciate it as well, because I'm, I know they could use some additional flow into that system and some more pit so some more about rate payers all right can we move on to uh, the next item on our agenda or do we want to skip it <laughs> the uh discuss the regional transportation options mr gilberto thank you mr chairman so uh, by way of an update gentlemen thank you thank you uh, thank by you. way of an update i did have a opportunity to meet with uh, representative jones and the executive director of the statewide Association of Regional Transit Authorities, and uh, it, it seems that uh, there may be some resources available to us out there for um, paratransit services from a local regional transit authority, um, um, in particular the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority, which is uh, based to our north and somewhat to the east. Um, I sp spoke with the administrator of the MVRTA, and uh, he, he confirmed that yeah, there might be something they'd be able to do. And uh, according to my from my meeting with Representative Jones and the director of the statewide association of RTAs, uh, there's a possibility of us being able to effectively uh, transfer some of our MBTA assessment towards uh, services contracted through one of the uh, RTAs. In, the, in this case, the uh, Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. So it was a very intriguing option that may or may not have any an impact on the town's budget. So uh, first, uh, you know, I want to thank Representative Jones for arranging that discussion. Uh, and secondly, I wanted to apprise the board that this is a conversation that's taking place. It's something that will continue to take place, uh, more specifically at a meeting scheduled to take place this coming Monday, May 1st at 10 o'clock here in the town hall. I've asked the town planner to join. Uh, she uh, will have uh, uh, the consultant that we uh, identified uh, through the community compact funding for uh, evaluating transportation options for the el elderly and disabled. Uh, that person will also join us, um, and I thought that it would certainly be prudent to have representation from the Board of Selectmen as well uh, in attendance at that meeting, um, uh, you know, one or perhaps two members uh, of the board, um, mostly because uh, we need, to some extent, we have to determine what the need is. I, I, you know, I think I know what the need is based on the conversation we've had and, and the calls that I think we all get. It's uh, paratransit. That's the biggest issue that we have in the community. I think we would love to have a fixed route bus service running north-south on Main Street and east-west on Route 62. I don't think that the financial capacity is there for us to be able to fund that, nor do I think that the demand is there at the moment. But the paratransit, it appears we may have a viable option and something that's certainly worth uh, evaluating. Uh, I think we may have had a preference at one point to look to the MBTA to provide the ride. Um, based on the T's finances, I don't think that that's likely to, to materialize in the, in the short term. But the Merrimack Valley uh, RTA to, would appear uh, has the capacity to do so. Uh, but you know, again, obviously needs to be vetted through some meetings. So I thought I'd update the board and ask if the board would want to assign a couple of member, our member or members to attend. Yes. Uh, Question number one, uh, the MBTA assessment. Yes. Okay. What is that number? It's approximately $105,000, I believe. Per? Year, annual, it's an annual assessment. Well, okay. And? Um, for all the services. Yeah. Yeah, for all the services. Uh, and that, that's prescribed okay. by state statute. What's that? They, that's prescribed by state statute. I mean, state some statute. of that can be transferred and we get something right. out of it. Right. <laughs> Obviously. Right. Well, it's um, a no-brainer. I, I would love to go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go anyway on, on the first, but I'd, I'd love to go uh, uh, on the first at 10 a.m. to... Is this the meeting on the first of May? First of May. May 1st, yes. May 1st. Uh, anyone else like to... 
Bill? I'd like to go, but you know, those other motives, that's fine. It would be nice if someone else could go. I mean, I just. I, I, he said, Bob, I mean, uh, Mike said that he, he, he'd be interested in going as well. Okay, that's fine with me. So, the rest of the board members? Captain Mike, on that's the first, where? Yes. What time is the meet? 10 o'clock here at the town hall. In this room? Um, I believe so. Okay. So, our next board meeting is the 8th, correct? Yes. With the exception of a reorg meeting on the fourth. Yes. And I take it that all the board members here can attend the meeting on the fourth. What time is that? Seven o'clock. It will be a very short meeting, as it usually is. It's just the real people there, right? Yeah. <laughs> just, that's how it's just short. Oh, that way I had communicated that date and time with the other individual running for the Board of Selectmen. So that whoever wins will be present for the meeting. Point we reorganize and we'll want to our challenges next year. Bigger and better things. <laughs> All right. And we have a meeting on the 8th, and then I gather on the 22nd, right, Michael? That's correct, yes. A town meeting two weeks later. Yeah. So we got a lot of work to do in the month of May so the leading up to town meeting. We still have a few things to deal so with. the 15th. So, Mr. Chairman, through you, I, I know you were not present at the last meeting, but uh, we uh, attempted to schedule things as such to have the uh, warrant voted on on May 8th. Um, that would also be the same evening as the budget hearing for FY 2018. Mm -hmm. I also expect it to be the same evening for the submission of the capital plan from the Capital right. uh, Improvement Planning Committee. It's going to be another busy meeting. It will be. Uh, part of the reason that we wanted to go through and adjust, uh, make as many recommendations as possible this evening so we wouldn't have that carryover mm -hmm. workload on May 8th and perhaps uh, avoid needing to have a meeting on May 1st, which certainly the board may opt to do, but uh, at this point, based on the progress, may not have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we seem to be you know, moving along, uh, granted, with a lot of Okay, lot let's of see if still. we can get through the rest of the meeting quickly. We have uh, minutes of March. Do that next meeting. Regular session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the March 13, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. Ewell. All the motion, all in favor? Aye. Uh, we have also March 20th regular session. Mr. Chairman, through you a comment. For, for those who have not observed, uh, we had uh, an error in the motion with regard to the approval of the ballot question, and it was not of the board's doing, but it was a Scrivener's error on, the, on our part in giving a motion that rather than include the word within for the ballot question relative to recreational marijuana, it included the word with, which was less than clear. And in consultation with the town clerk, town council, and the state uh, secretary of the Commonwealth's office, they recommended that it be considered a Scrivener's error that the intention of the board was clear with regard to the question and that we adjust the ballot question, which we have done for the printed ballots and we've mm -hmm. done for the template that's up on the town website. Why am I bringing this up? Because the March 20th, 2017 minutes are the meeting at which that vote happened and we've added a note at the end clarifying um, that, uh, that at the meeting this evening at which these minutes were approved, a ministerial error was noted, recreational marijuana prohibition ballot question at the May 2nd, 2017 town election will read as follows. And I'll read it, if that's all right, just for the record. Shall the town prohibit the operation of all types of marijuana establishments as defined in General Law Chapter 94G, Section 1, including marijuana cultivators, marijuana testing facilities, marijuana product manufacturers, marijuana retailers, or any other type of licensed marijuana-related businesses within, emphasis, the town of North Reading, question mark. 
So I guess you're just no. asking us now to approve the adjusted regular session minutes of the 20th, correct? Yes. It's in there, so Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the March 20th, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. Here a second. 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 On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Unanimous. Oh, mm -hmm. you're abstaining, I'm sorry. I was abstaining. One abstention. Okay, we have regular and executive session minutes of April 3rd. Let's start with regular session, Ms. Manapelli. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the April 3rd regular session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. All in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Now it's four and one abstention. Executive session of the same day. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the April 3rd, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And the chairman abstains, having not attended the meeting. Okay, let's see where are we? Review the town administrator's evaluation, as I reported earlier, the uh, uh, Steve and I uh, did the compiled evaluation, which you have a copy of. Uh, and I thank everybody for getting the uh, their re individual reviews to me before I had surgery, which allowed me to get some time to pull it all together. So I appreciate that. And uh, we re reviewed the uh, town administrator's regular uh, evaluation as compared to his personal re uh, review of himself. Talked about some items where there were fairly substantial differentials in what the board uh, rated and how he rated himself. And most of the time, he underrated himself versus the board, so there were any major issues. But we've completed that, and that will get filed in his, uh, uh, in his personnel file as we do every year. And then, uh, are there any comments or Questions regarding that at this point? I think it's pretty clear you got all the information in advance. And we follow the same procedure we followed in the past. The chair and the vice chair have sat down with them and gone through the review. All of your comments and notes were included in the review. Mr. Chairman. Oh, and, and Catherine, in the future, Ooh. when you're turning it in, depending on who's so, the chairman, if you turn in the Word document, it makes it a little easier in the individual getting the information. <laughs> I didn't want you to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I gathered that, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I said, this is coming from a lawyer. I get PDF. <laughs> but thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just want to thank you for all the time you spent pulling that together. I know yeah. it's So Catherine gave people. me an extra task. I had to get to a copy of Adobe. You know, Acrobat, where you could actually change. I change, yeah, I yeah. do that. Well, we should just put it officially on probation right now. <laughs> so I got around, I got around it anyway, Catherine. Yeah, thank just you. for the record. Administrative probation. <laughs> well, whatever can be done can be undone. <laughs> and then most importantly, uh, you know, I've been working and the board has been working with it. We had one meeting prior to uh, uh, my formal meeting with Michael Gilberto on the agreement. Steve and I met with him and then we made a couple of minor changes to his agreement, which starts on July 1st of 2017, with that running to June 30th of 2020. And today, uh, an executive session, and now we're going to, uh, do we have a motion? I, I think the first thing to do, Mr. Chairman, is maybe report to the public that the overall evaluation of the town administrator was uh, overall exemplary and positive score of Whatever it was, it was up there. Yeah, I don't so, have it in front yeah, of it was up there. Two hundred what? But anyway, it was. Uh, he just happens to have it's it in front. Yeah, two nineteen. Yes. Uh, he yeah. got an A. Yeah, he got an A. He got an A overall A. Is, uh, how many possible points? And, and, and unanimity here, and um, I think it's important to acknowledge, uh, obviously, his performance of the last, uh, the last year, but over the last three years now, almost three years, um, has been extraordinary and. Um, we put a lot on his plate, and he's done an awful lot in a very short period of time. And you know, I for one I certainly appreciate all the effort that he that he does put in, and, uh, and the level of professionalism that he provides to us. And 
I've served with a lot of administrators over the years, and you're doing a terrific job. I certainly appreciate all the effort that you're, you're putting in for us and on our behalf. It's a job above and beyond yeah. all of our expectations. So. I mean, I think we are at the point where we can say what uh, we, how we really feel about uh, the TA, I think. Uh, first of all, I do thank you for uh, doing what you have done to, to put this review together and to make it uh, as fair as possible and uh, uh, be accurate uh, on the services that are provided by the TA. Uh, you know, to Mike, you know, I, I, I only say that, that, you know, to you that um, you're so exemplary. Um, you work with people on a people basis, you know, as, as on a human basis, and it's easy to work with you. Uh, y your performance is, is not, not only great, but the way that you work with people is great and you know some of us have an opportunity we talk to other people around town uh, employees or whatever just general conversation and I know that the feedback that I get from everybody is that uh, it's, it's a pleasure to work with you and it's a pleasure to work for you so um, and I don't know if I'm going to be here in a couple weeks you know and I just you know that's what I think about you you, you, you do a fantastic job thank you Steve, thank you. Well, I, can, I can go next. I think you're brilliant. I think you're the town's serendipity. I agree with Mr. Yule. I think you execute your responsibilities with such a high degree of professionalism, but also with such humility in terms of how you're thinking of not just us and how you're communicating with not just us, but you clearly have our town workforce in mind in terms of everything that's going on with them, too, and you're able to really connect us in that way with the workforce and connect us to what's going on with everything in the town and you know I think you're I think I think you deserve all fives <laughs> and I'm not shocked that you yourself rated yourself differently than we did that's not a surprise to me but I just keep up the great work it's a pleasure to work with you and, and it's uh, I'm thankful and grateful for everything you're doing for the town and, and for us as a board. Thank you. Well, I gave you an extra point for the great first name and for having a vowel at the end of your last <laughs> name. So you got extra points for all that. But on a serious note, Mike, it is the little things that you do that I know even some of your own staff probably don't see it, but they are very effective in helping us get things done. And you, know, what we've done in regards to changing the status of the town with the acquisition of the, JG, the potential sale of that Jade Berry, a lot of it is credited to you because there was a lot of little things that we had to do that uh, you had to pull together last minute. And if we pull this off by December 1st, uh, it certainly is a lot to do with you and you alone. And I know you don't like to take credit for it, but it truly does fall on you. And on behalf of the whole town, we have a debt of gratitude for the level of effort it took you. It wasn't leaving here at you know 4.30 or 5.30 to get that done. We know you were here late evenings. And uh, it, honestly, it's, it's going to really help us change the, the future for us and the future direction. Whether all of us are here or none of us are here in the next five years, you put us on a path and it really proves that this board made the right decision selecting you and you should be very proud and your family should be very proud. So thank you. Thank you. And your wife. Yeah. Yes. 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 God bless her. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how hours. she puts up with him personally. I have a hard time. Oh, yeah. Michael. Hey, offer a comment? Of course. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I appreciate the, the positive feedback. Um, you know, I, I uh, continue to consider it a, um, an honor to work for, for the town. And uh, um, I enjoy very much the working relationship that. Uh, I have with uh, the board that I feel I have with the board and with the individual members of the board, and uh, I always tie back to something I said at the in the interview, sitting at that table or a different table at that location, with this table set up in a different <laughs> configuration. Well, actually, new tables. <laughs> 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 at, at these locations, but at different tables. 
uh, where uh, you know, I expressed that that was something that was important to me because I think it's important um, for all us, all of us to be in communication, have an understanding of what's going on, and to have a relationship so that we function well. Uh, in terms of the, um, you know, the positive outcome, as I've said in the past, uh, I, I hope that my evaluation is an indicator of how well we as a whole are doing, meaning the, the board, the other elected officials, and of course uh, the employees here in the town hall and uh, outside the town hall uh, who do the good work of the town day in and day out um, selflessly and, and uh, you know, depending upon their position, perhaps not noticed, but uh, doing very meaningful work. And so I, I would say to the town employees, thank you for your support and for your, for your hard work day in and day out. My final comment, um, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll just note that uh, you mentioned my family. And I, I, um, my family is what makes it possible for me to contribute in the way that um, the board's identified here and to do whatever small part I might be doing here. And, uh, and that, that starts with my wife, who uh, shoulders so much of the burden at home to allow me to be out in evenings and my two boys, Max and Noah, who are so understanding when Daddy has a meeting to the point where they report it back to me when I have a meeting so they know the term and they know what it means. Um, and uh, so uh, I, I owe a tremendous debt to my, uh, to my wife, Jen, who allows me to participate in the way that I do. Um, and I, I'd also note uh, two other people who I didn't mention last year, and it's been eating at me for not mentioning them, but uh, my mother and father, uh, Paul and uh, Maureen, who uh, help care for my children as well. Um, they, they fill in the gaps when we need the gaps to be filled in. They, they watch, our, watch our kids one day a week. Um, and uh, I just uh, say thank you to them as well. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, just want to comment. I just want to comment that, you know, one of the things that uh, you know, I think I've been chair for the period that Michael has been on board and meet with him every Wednesday morning, which allows us to help get the agenda set for the coming meetings and to discuss new new things that, you know, eventually come down to the board. And whoever is the chair going forward, uh, I would strongly suggest that it doesn't have to be a Wednesday necessarily, but it ought to be a weekly meeting with the town administrator is very important. And of course, other board members can be at their own schedules with the town administrator because I think it's very important also. Uh, so with that, uh, I don't see a, a written motion to approve the contract, the new contract agreement. There was Oh, you do have one? I could just make it up. Yeah, okay, would you do that please? Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify and sign the agreement with the, between the town of North Reading and the town administrator, town administrator Michael Gilberto for three year period through ending June 30th, 2020. It's July 1st. It's July 1st, 2017. Through June 30th. To June 31st, 2020. June 30th. Okay. June 30th. June 30th, 2020. 2020. 2020. Second. Se Second by Mr. O'Leary. On the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. The uh, document that we discussed this evening before <coughs> going public uh, is in kind of draft form. It needs to be formalized uh, and signed by the board, which will be done over the next week. At some point, board members will take a come in and sign the document. At some point in time, uh, there's a draft, Michael, in the uh, crop box. It's if you're in I agreement. I provide you yes. with a <laughs> straighter copy <laughs> to, uh, you know, Get it into a form, get the draft out of it. Yes, we'll, we'll finalize it. I'll let the board members know. You don't have to do it tonight. So, we have also a ratifying memorandum of agreement for the North Reading Library staff, which is a contract yeah. for the next, well, it's two years, right? Yeah, it's retro retroactive. Contract, right? For the next yeah. two years. Because it covers this year. So have a, I think there is a motion. Yes. In Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify and sign the memorandum of agreement between the Town of North Reading and the North Reading Library staff for the period of July 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2018. Second. Ted minus to you. I don't think there's any further discussion. It was reviewed first in executive session. So on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
unanimous. Town Administrator's report. Mr. Chairman, uh, through you, just uh, one comment that I'll offer uh, with regard to the TA report, uh, and that is that uh, the work continues with regard to the Arthur Kenny uh, restroom facility. We had a walk through this morning where four interested uh, bidders showed up, which was encouraging. Uh, many more had told the plans, uh, of course, not yet returning them. Uh, a critical moment uh, will be Wednesday when we appear before the state uh, board of examiners of plumbers and gas fitters to ask for a further reduction in the number of fixtures from 13 to 10 total. That would be five in the women's and five in the men's room. Uh, Parks Director Marty Tilton, uh, myself, and uh, Plumbing Inspector Ed Cerigliano will attend that meeting. Um, and uh, again, we thank Representative Brad Jones' office for his uh, assistance in uh, facilitating uh, fast consideration of this uh, um, reduction. The uh, proposals on that project are due in on May 4th, about a week from the uh, this coming Thursday, and there has been a, a meeting of the Athletic Facilities Committee scheduled for Friday, May 5th at 3 o'clock in the Distance Learning Lab over at the high school, middle school complex, and that will be to uh, review the results of the procurement process. Uh, we also expect there to be a, a meeting of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee at that same time to hear the, the uh, responses, and it will all uh, come together on Monday the 8th uh, for our meeting Monday evening, May 8th, uh, which will finalize the capital budget as well as the town meeting warrant. I believe that that includes my comments at this point. Oh, I do have one other comment, which is that we're uh, slowly ramping up now a street sweeping plan, and I will be putting out some more publicity for uh, uh, residents to be aware of. Uh, you may have seen some activity in the center of town, um, so uh, just be aware that uh, there will be some more publicity out there with regard to that over the coming weeks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, Jeff. I want to ask him a question about the <coughs> about the this morning you had a uh, you had some contractors come out and do yeah. some bids and, and so, so on. Um, it's a walkthrough. They did not submit bids. They, oh, they okay. come to learn more about the project. Okay, so they uh, yes. but they have to submit a bid by the fourth. May fourth. Okay, were there um, uh, any? Any dollar amount requirements or any um, in the presentation to them about how much they do? If there's a cap on the bid number, I guess that's what I'm trying to find out. So, uh, sure, we, we don't provide them a cap. Um, they ask us for uh, uh, cost estimation uh, based on any information that we may have available. And so we conveyed that we had a cost estimate of $600,000, and we conveyed that um, we believe that that was an all-inclusive number for the entirety of the project. Um, you mean the, the bathrooms, the, the slab and the snack shack? Yes. That's my understanding of what was related during the walkthrough. Okay. Thank you. Larry? All the new business? Yes. Oh, okay. I just want to, uh, again, encourage people to uh, to get out and vote on Election Day. And uh, uh, aside from uh, Mr. Yule running for re-election and uh, Mr. Schultz uh, seeking to uh, get a seat at the, at the table here, uh, along with the school committee uh, candidates, uh, again, these people deserve your respect and uh, participation in the, in the process. And in addition to that, we have the ballot question in relation to... Uh, uh, medical marijuana, excuse me, uh, recreational marijuana, whether you want it in the community or not. So I, I think there's uh, ample reason to come out and have an interest, and uh, I uh, no, hope I that everybody would participate. And I wish, wish uh, Mr. Yule the best of luck in his attempt to be reelected to the board. So since we met last, the deadline to submit bids on the 102 Lowell Road RFP has come and gone, and unfortunately, I have to report that we didn't get any bids. You got no bids? No bids. Uh, we did have the bidders conference. One person did show up, as you were informed, and but that individual company was looking to build a residential uh, as an option, so that's not part of the RFP. What's the next so, plan? 
So I'm here tonight to, um, that's where I was before this, the EDC wanted to meet to uh, make a formal request to the board of their recommendation to the board and they're gonna make the same to the CPC. Their recommendation is that we hold off for at least a year. Allow Pulte to get into the site, start their development, and once the first building's up, we feel confident that that 102 Lowell Road will become a lot more interesting to a potential commercial business once they start to see a, a development going in. And this recommendation also was supported by um, Fran DeCoste, our, TM, our commercial real estate broker. He felt that we would be better off waiting as well. So that's the recommendation, but it's purely up to the board what you want to do going forward. But I support that recommendation of the EDC. I think that's the right thing to do. The only thing we do lose is we lose another um, 5% if we don't sell it within the first two years. But that's okay. I, I think we've done pretty good on 104. So, But we still have an opportunity to sell it within the next five years and get 5% uh, in addition to all the other percentages. None of those will change in our sale partnership model, by the way. Everything will stay in place. The only one that's affected is that one uh, incentive, which is sell within two years to get 10%, sell within five years to get 5% extra. What a West Side Station, Dave? Out of the feasibility okay. side, I think, yeah, I, what is it, I think it makes a lot of sense to consider. But it's two and a half acres? It's two, eight, yes, it's two, two and a half plus, acres. Okay. And I think it would be an excellent location for uh, a fire state, for the fire station. I, I do. I think it would be a great spot. But, uh, but again, I don't want to so dictate what was the uh, What was Fran's take as to why there was such a lack of interest? Uh, he did, well, he just believes that really there's nothing there. You don't see anything. You know, they drive by, they don't see any potential future customers to put a restaurant there or any kind of service. But he really feels once they start to see a development and they see there's going to be a thousand people there, it's going to change the scope of that use. Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So maybe, <laughs> but we have no. them right down the road. Yeah. I think you would see Something a chain big. restaurant be very, he believes the chain restaurant would be very interested in moving in there when they start to see these tall structures going up in 50 people, uh, 50 units in each structure. I think that will change the game. But I still think, even selfishly, we should consider it for a potential site for a West Side fire station or the new fire station. You know, when we talk about the fire station and the use, it's uh, something that we have to figure out because we know that one's just not big enough. It just seems a it, it seems like a waste to put a lot of money into an old building where we could build a brand new headquarters on this side and maybe use that as the satellite. But it's something that we should mm -hmm. obviously consider as we go through this in, in October. So from a timing point of view, uh, do we want to put this on? I don't think, I think if we're going to put it on our agenda for further discussion, we're going to wait until the town meeting at this point. We're not going to lose anything this from it anyway. We're in no rush. Okay. Remember, the appraisal on that property was 280 grand, so I think the longer we wait, the more valuable we'll actually get. What else you got, Michael? Mm -hmm. uh, Although it might be valuable, more valuable to get, I think, our RFP limited what it's going to be because uh, with the current, with the new zoning there, which was just approved, we would, we could ask the value of that appraisal would go up because that. it now allows for housing. Well, which we could do, and by the way, and I believe we have enough money remaining in our budget. Uh, to do another appraisal if the board wanted to do that, but I'd have to check with Daniel. Yeah, there's no need to do an updated appraisal if you're not going to allow permitted uses on the, on the property. So I think we just have to decide whether or not what we want to do. I just offer it as information yeah. if you want to consider it. That it, Mike? That's it. Catherine? Just welcome back. And um, uh, Bob actually caught, Selectman mm -hmm. Mossier actually called me the day he got got home from the hospital to have a lengthy discussion about town business, so <laughs> didn't really Well, I was, stop rather, I was rather impressed that I could reach you. <laughs> you so busy with you. Oh, that's twice. Boy. I know, uh, I know. Twice. So, no, I know. Yeah. So no, that was great. That I, was really great. Anyway, so yeah. welcome back. And, you know, Good to glad be back. to see you. Good to be back. I'm getting in, yeah. I'm getting to full speed. Another couple of weeks probably, but. Yeah. Jeffrey? Um, Steve's right, we have an election coming up, and um, uh, I encourage voters to come and vote. Um, 
and people who haven't voted to come and vote. Uh, it's, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to do that. And uh, we have, obviously, for selectmen, there is a contended, contested uh, uh, race. And in the school committee, we have a contested race. So that's, that's good. That means there's more people involved. Um, of course, I have no idea what the results are going to be. I do have a preference. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to take this opportunity, in case I, I don't have the opportunity later on, uh, you know, to say that uh, three years plus three, uh, I have sat at, at this table behind this desk, plus the newer version, and uh, it's always been a privilege to be able to, to be here and work with everybody on the board. And I, I mean, well, actually seven of us, let's put it that way, okay? Uh, all of us, because uh, I always learn, every time I come here, I always learn something new. Um, I get a lot of experienced people uh, sharing their ideas, uh, trying to do good things for the town, and, and, and uh, I, I respect that. It, differences aside, that's, that's, that's a minor thing. Uh, that's actually a good thing when you have differences because they conjure up new ideas and so on. Um, I want to say, Jane, you, you are so good at what you do here. Uh, making sure the minutes are as accurate as possible. I mean, we can be bloviated at times, and it's not necessarily very easy for you to capture everything we say, but you, ha you have by far been the best uh, uh, clerk that we've ever had. Okay, just no secretary. With, no, I'm forgetting the title, but no. You don't get to include that. Right. You know, <laughs> speaking, you know, he, does, he doesn't get those high rankings without you. Just remember that, okay? Uh, so, uh, but thank you for everything that you do thank you know, for us. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, again, Mike, you know, I'll iterate what I, what I said before. Working with you, uh, going back to when we used to drive, with the, you know, back and forth to one town, different town to another uh, with the Northeast Municipal Gas Pipeline. God, we talked about all kinds of things from waffles to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to solving the problems in the town, and and uh, uh, and yes, you know, you, I didn't say it before, but you know, behind every great man is a great wife, and um, uh, you obviously are very fortunate uh, in that in that case. So you know, um, thank you for all that you do. Okay, and and, and Steve, you've always you know given um, very clear and insightful. Uh, uh, perspectives of the uh, of, of, a, of a given situation, you know, and you know, Mike. I want to say, you know, you and I we have our differences uh, for various reasons, uh, but you you do hard work for the town. You work hard as a selectman. Um, you 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 come up with uh, many good ideas, uh, and uh, um, I, I I respect that. And and working with you, um, uh, you know. Is it one year now or two years now? No, one year, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it it's seems about like May of it's, 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 been, it's been a long year. Though. Yeah, right. well, it's, it's been a long year. It seems like I've been working with We're you for a long time. Okay. So, so I know. you know, I, 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 I appreciate uh, your legal input and, and, and your, your, your quick assessment on, on, uh, uh, you know, things that come before you. Uh, you know, I know it's been time consuming for you and. And sometimes, uh, but I think you're quick. You, you take things, you learn things quickly. I guess is the best way for me to say it. And, and Bob, uh, if if there's ever a term uh, that uh, is uh, correct here, uh, uh, chairman for life, uh, you you have always been non-judgmental. And you, you know, no matter what you, you, you may think that what we say half the time is crazy from each individual at one given time or another, but you are as steady as a calm lake, all right? Uh, you, you hold us together and uh, you make sure that uh, we stay on course and uh, uh, I, I, I admire that. So uh, hopefully I'm back 
again, and then, then I get another two years, I can say the same thing. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, so, you know, you. That, that, that's how I feel. I, I, I do have a little bit of a frustration, because I don't like to end things on a negative uh, uh, tone, uh, but I was extremely shocked uh, today. Now, the campaign has been a, a bit of a tough campaign, um, and, and uh, I don't mean tough in, 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 in doing it, but uh, <coughs> uh, in, in words by, by many people. And I, I've tried to, in all my uh, ability, to not get involved in that, and, and I think I've done a good job in, in that regard. I just try to express my points, my viewpoints, uh, and so on. And, and really, all I'm trying to do, like you, all of you, I'm trying to save everybody or the town money, uh, just like you are trying to save the town money and so on. Um, but on my, when I came out of my house tonight to, to, uh, come, to the, come to the meeting, uh, I, the, the most astonishing thing happened. Um, my opponent was parked just a little bit outside, uh, halfway down from my, my neighbor's property, which is a small property with the lights on, facing my house. And I came out and I recognized the car, and so I just ignored it. And I got in, the, in my car and was about to start, and my opponent made a U-turn and sped away. And I have no idea why that was done. I can't be in somebody else's mind, all right? Um, all I know is I turned around like to come here, and I came to the stoplight, and it was, that, con that was confirmed. I don't, I don't understand that, and I don't understand uh, the negativism when people are really just trying to do a good job and just trying to be, put their best foot forward. It, it should just never be as mean as it sometimes get. And I say this for the next person more than myself, okay? But I was really shocked to have seen that, and, and uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what to say. And I hate to end on, on that kind of a note, but it was just too bizarre for me, so. I apologize, you know, in, in what, are you, what are you talking about? What are we doing here? It doesn't even make sense what you're talking about, Jeff. If you're trying to call out, this isn't enough time for a political stand. I and mean, this is unacceptable, Mr. Messieri. I'm sorry. This is inappropriate. And I don't even know what the heck you're talking about. Well, if no one's here to defend themselves, then it's not right. If there was an issue, you should deal with the other people. But to make a political stance here, this that, is not what not, we're here for. It's not a political stance. I'm just telling you. It was something that I experienced, and I find when I look at the town and I look at the positive things, I try to concentrate on them. But sometimes, when things happen, they need to be stated. Don't understand what happened. You want to bring it up here? Anything else, Jeff? That's it. So, so Jeff, uh, one is I want to thank you for the past three years. Wish you luck in the election. And I don't want to jinx anything by saying goodbye to you tonight or <laughs> anything. So this is what I would ask, and maybe uh, you can make that work. But if in the event that at the end of the election you lose, I would like you to come to our meeting at the beginning of our regular open session meeting on the 8th so that we can formally thank you for your efforts over the past three years. Thank you very much. Rather than to take time to do that, you know, now, you know, people thinking, well, he's gone, when well, you may not be gone. Right. So I, think that, uh, I appreciate so you not bearing me now. <laughs> anyway, uh, with respect, I, I want to thank all the board members for uh, uh, helping out in the uh, review process and in the, uh, getting the uh, TA contract done on a, Time I thought it was fair for the current board to get that complete rather than let it fall into uh, after the election when things could change. Uh, and uh, I, I thank all of you for supporting me while I was uh, getting better. And uh, I'm, you know, probably at 75% now. I'm kind of taking it easy every other day. And you know, in a week or two, I hope uh, I've seen the doctor in three more weeks. At which time then he'll be happy and say, yeah, you can go do what you want. So uh, I think.
and uh, you know, appreciate all the support and all the thank yous and uh, look forward to uh, our next meeting because we got a lot to do <laughs> and not a lot of time to get it done. Well, your 75 percent is always far better than my 100 percent. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm taking it 75 any day. <laughs> you never know. Anyway, uh, at this point, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. 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 Motion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.